I'll be your pilot today. Boys and girls, the New York Jets have a new starting right tackle. The New York Jets have traded for once New York Jet. Morgan Moses coming back home. The Jets receive Morgan Moses and a fourth round pick number 134. The Ravens receive a fourth round pick number 112 and a sixth round pick. And I'm loving this. This is awesome. Now, according to... Schefter, no, Rappaport. Rappaport says Moses turns 33 this year, or just turned 33, started 14 games last season due to make $5.5 million in the final year of his contract. So either the Jets are letting him roll on $5.5 million or they're going to rework this deal. They'll extend him, I would imagine, to maybe a two-year window is kind of what I'm thinking that the Jets are sort of gearing themselves towards with Aaron Rodgers and everything that could potentially be going on with the New York Jets and, and the Super Bowl push that they're looking to go for. But, oh, I'm all sorts of excited because now that means AVT is not playing right tackle at the very least. And now we're just looking for one more tackle. And could that be the tackle we get at number 10 overall? Could it be AVT kicking out that way? Is there another move coming down the pipeline? I very much like this. I'm excited to get into your guys' thoughts. Mutt Viles coming in nice and early with a little uh, J-E-T-S action. Hold on, let me get this pulled up, and then we will start firing away on comments. I'm excited for this. I'm really pumped about this one. I liked Morgan Moses. I was really bitter when we wound up letting him leave via free agency, but that was so much, so much of that had to do with Mekhi Becton and how, like, the New York Jets were kind of vested into him. They were, they had to, you know, commit the time because they took him at such a high draft pick it's really hard and really frustrating to see just how, like, it, it's frustrating. That's, that's really the, <laughs> the crux of it all. It's really frustrating to see how the, uh, the Jets just let him go. He was the best offensive lineman that we had at the time. And uh, we let him walk out the door because we were so vested in Mekhi Becton and the high draft status that he had. The New York Jets needed to commit to, to Becton. Now that they're seemingly uncommitted to Becton, I don't think any of us really expect him to come back this season. We finally can move on. This happened with George Fant as well. The same thing. Morgan Moses wanted to start somewhere else. It's not that he didn't want to stay with the New York Jets. The Jets wouldn't commit to starting him. He would have had to compete with Becton, and he's like, screw that. I'm going to the Ravens. I totally get that. Totally get it. I understand. I'm all sorts of excited. So let's get into your thoughts and comments. Do a little discussing right here. Harry W. says, you need a thumb in the middle. <laughs> Mayan Rivera says, my only question is why the Ravens let Moses go. Well, he's in the final year of his contract, $5.5 million. They're probably looking to upgrade the position from a uh, an older position. That would be my guess. Boba Jet comes in here. Thank you so much for the super chat, brother. He says, Ryan, long time, buddy. Been a long time. Uh, now, the only impact move left we have to make is a likely trade scenario for a wide receiver, May the Force be on the O-line. We gotta make, I'm gonna make a shirt. <laughs> We're gonna do this. With all that stuff coming out about Aaron Rodgers being like the vice president for RFK Jr., we're gonna have one of these like protect the, the president type shirts is what we're gonna wind up doing. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come up with something like that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Oh, Morgan Moses coming back <laughs> to the New York Jets. I'm super pumped on this one. Jets needed this and I agree with you. I wanna see a wide receiver trade as well. Matt said, just saw the news. Let's go. This is fantastic. He was great last year. He really was. He really was. And the New York Jets finally like make a good move here. I'm looking at the offensive tackle class and free agency. I'm saying, this is not going well for our New York Jets. Oh, not fun. Not fun. But this is, this may got me feeling good right now. Alex comes in and says, I feel like this eliminates Fuwaga at 10. Not sure how they feel comfortable starting Fuwaga at left tackle. I would say I don't know if it necessarily eliminates it. And it depends how they restructure his contract, what they kind of consider. Um, I don't, I think it does take us out of tackle at 10, primarily for the right side. But he is 34 or 33 years old. So you could argue that it doesn't really matter. He's going to have to get his replacement regardless. But maybe you feel more comfortable with the Carter Warren backing up a Morgan Moses on the right-hand side. And then you got 
AVT potentially as the emergency left-hand tackle. Maybe the Jets feel like they can either trade up for Alt or Fashanu is going to be there and they have their left tackle coming in at number 10. I love, 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 love this move. Big time fan. Jake W becomes a frequent flyer of the Jet Talk 24-7 family. Thank you so much. Where's my J-E-T-S button? I don't know if my sound effect went. <laughs> it may have gone, it may not have gone. Thank you so much for joining. Zorlis comes in. Says, wide receiver slash Bowers at 10 seems more likely now. I completely agree. I've been saying for like a little bit now that I think the pick at 10 is going to be a weapon. The Jets aren't able to like get a free agent weapon that's going to be deemed, you know, a reasonable enough contract that's going to be an impactful enough starter. But in the draft, you can get someone that's so much cheaper. Bowers, I love at 10. I would love a Brian Thomas Jr. in a trade down scenario. Maybe that means the Jets are more likely to trade down and scoop up a second round pick. Then you get your maybe one of the other tackles at some point in uh, the teens, maybe. And then you have a second round pick out there floating around. Add in another wide receiver. I would love that. I would love it. I can't wait. Sorless. Thank you so much for chiming in here. Let me uh, get a little organized on my side here. JT becoming a member of the economy class. Thank you so much for joining the Jets Talk 24-7 family. J-E-T-S. J-E-T-S, J-E-T-S, J-E-T-S. <laughs> Boys and girls, drop some J-E-T-S in the chat. Celebrate those new emojis. We got a new right tackle, boys and girls. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. J-Man says, Bowers at 10 now. Lowski, sound the alarm. J-D is awake. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. <laughs> Let's go. V-Man, what do I sip to celebrate this move? Don Q, Gran Añejo. Don Q, Gran Reserve. Bac- uh, Bacardi, wow. <laughs> I almost said Bakhtiari. 10, or Ron Del Barito. Two star, or Bruegel Extra Viejo. I don't know what any of those are for the most part. So whichever one you, whichever one suits you best. I'm gonna be cruising a little high. I'm feel, feeling kind of good. I'm gonna be going with one of the, uh, the Crescent THC Seltzers. We'll be, we'll be chilling with this right now. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get too mellowed out. I'm a little jazzed up right now. Let's go. Jets get a tackle. Jets get a tackle. Terrence dropping in with a super chat. Thank you so much. Says, I think JD is waiting for the Chargers to figure out what they're going to do with their cuts. Williams and likely trading Mac. So I think Williams is definitely getting cut. They have four guys, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams are the two receivers. Both could save $20 million. And then I think Khalil Mack and Bosa, I think they're both actually, like all four of them are around $20 million cap savings. I think they restructure Bosa to stay there. And I think they restructure Allen to finish his career there. I do think Mike Williams gets cut loose. And I think for the Jets, Mike Williams is an interesting option, but it depends how much it's going to cost you because he's had the injury history. He tore his ACL last year. I don't love, love, love that. But I could see him waiting. Seeing who shakes loose here. Uh, Iconic Calliware says, if this is our right tackle, what does that mean for the draft? It means left tackle and weapon is on the plate of the New York Jets. And I'm very excited for this. And trade down. The most likely scenarios now. I feel like at number 10, it's Olu Fashanu, it's Joe Alt, it's Bowers, and then trade down. It's those three and trade down. I don't know if they're necessarily going to pull the trigger on a Fuaga unless they think that like, Moses only has a year and they're, they're, they're going to groom someone. But I like the idea of grooming Warren behind Moses here and then hopefully letting him take over or maybe extending Moses on a two-year contract, three-year contract. Who cares? Trent Williams is like 100 years old. Uh, Jason Peters played forever. He was 100 years old. I like it. Jets can, can take their time figuring out the right way to build this line. But I love this move. This is fixing a wrong that was done because of the uh, investment we had in Mekhi Becton. Thanks for the cheese says, this means we sign a left tackle and draft a weapon or sign a weapon and draft a left tackle. What would your ideal scenario be and who would you sign or draft? I think, Bac- uh, now I'm saying Bacardi. <laughs> Bakhtiari is gonna come, thank you V-Man for that. I think Bakhtiari is gonna come in as our left tackle. I really do. And if you have Bakhtiari and Moses as your tackles and you have uh, friggin' Simpson at left guard, AVT right guard, Titman center. You bring back McGovern as a center. Now I'm feeling pretty confident in this. And then in the worst case scenario where something crazy happens, let's say, uh, you know, Bakhtiari gets knocked out. Then you have AVT kick out to tackle in the event Warren's not ready to go. And you slide McGovern or Titman over to the other guard spot that's vacated by AVT. I really like this. I would go the veteran offensive tackle route, get someone who's already primed to go. And then at number 10, 
go into the draft thinking trade down or taking the best available player. Because look, if you like Olu, if you like Alt, if you like Fuwaga, this isn't going to prevent you from necessarily going after them. But it does open the door more for a trade down. Pick up a second round pick. I love this. Really, really love this move for the New York Jets. B-Man says they're all aged rums. I drink them on the rocks. Well, that's delicious. And uh, I will cheers to you, V-Man. <laughs> They're very much excited for this. Ah, I got to mellow myself out. I'm all hyped. Let's go. Okay, so for those of you guys just hopping in, make sure you hit that like button for our new offensive tackle. Very pumped on this one. Jets receive Morgan Moses and a fourth round pick. So in essence, the Jets are trading down in the fourth and giving up a sixth for a starting right tackle. That's getting $5.5 million this year. Crazy town. Joe Douglas, I could kiss you, you big ug. Lug. This is what happens when you're trying to talk and do stuff at the same time. This is awesome. Let's see if I can get Morgan Moses' contract up here. Okay, yeah. So he's due $5.5 million. So this is a $5.5 million cap hit for the New York Jets. I expect them to try and restructure the contract and maybe add on an extra year or two. I love this. Big fan. Big, 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 big fan. All right, let's hop into your comments. I want to see what you guys are saying. I put a poll question in the chat. It says, Jets free agency so far. Fire, thumbs up, thumbs down. Sad monkey with his eyes closed. Before the Morgan, I started this stream, or I got the stream set up before the Morgan Moses news broke. And as soon as I put up the poll, it was all monkey closing his eyes. It was down votes. It was all upset. And then as soon as he signs, everything shifts. We're going back, baby. We're fixing the offensive line. That's what I want to see. <laughs> Come on. Mike the Stack Guy says, solid move. I like it. Matt Riley says, I think we should either Bakhtiari or Tyron Smith and sign Odell, then Odunze or Bowers. I like that, Matt. I think that's a good move as well. Mudvile says, show me a wide receiver signing. We're, we're cruising there. We're getting there. We're getting there. Venue Gaming, thank you so much for joining the channel. J-E-T-S. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Drop some J-E-T-S in the chat for our newest member of the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Stu says you're blaming Becton for the bullshit of the New York Jets coaching staff, putting him in the best. Uh, both are at fault. Look, I don't fault the Jets or Becton. I'm faulting the Jets for having taken Becton initially and then needing to feel like they have to continually wait for him to get healthy because all the upside was there. And I, I agreed with it. I Like, look, Morgan Moses wanted to start somewhere. I can totally see why the Jets want to go with Becton. No issue with Becton. No issue with Douglas in that sort of scenario. It just kind of sucks that Becton got hurt and we had that investment in him. So, look, I it's frustrating, but overall, I am not, uh, not blaming Becton or the coaching staff. I'm just glad we've righted the wrong that was uh, releasing Morgan Moses, or not re-signing him, I guess. Uh, Iconic Caliware drops in with a 10 spot. Thank you so much. Says the only two at play at left tackle, or, or that play left tackle, Alton Fashanu. So if they're gone, do you really want to take a tight end that can only catch, not a great blocker? He is not a complete tight end. That's too high for a one-sided tight end. So I really like you know what I like? I like the idea of trading down a few slots and going after like a Brian Thomas Jr. That would get me really, really excited. I don't know if the Jets would necessarily do that or if they're they're looking for a different kind of weapon. If Odunze is there at 10, I'm on board. I like Odunze. Brian Thomas Jr. has the size profile that I would like to see, though. Uh, let me see if I can get this pulled over here. Where did I have it? Sorry, I'm all over the place right now. We'll go back over here. We'll pull this up so everyone can come in and see it as they see it. Jake Ellie got paid for a kicker. I didn't see what the contract was. I'm interested to see that. Uh, Stamina Jones says, if we get Bakhtiari for left tackle, we have to draft Bowers. Then we should have a top 15 offense with this defense and special teams. There's no excuse not to make the playoffs and a deep playoff run. So I would say I very much think Bowers is in play. The fact that the Jets had uh, Michael Meyer high on their list last year. They wanted to go and get Jameer Gibbs as well. The Jets are looking for a home run talent. So I'm thinking weapon at 10. I don't know if it's Bowers. I don't know if it's a wide receiver. It's one or the other. The nice thing about adding a Bowers though, is it gives you someone 
that gets open very fast near the line of scrimmage. That is kind of complimentary for like Brees coming out of the backfield and Garrett coming out of, you know, from the wide receiver ranks. I think it gives you three layers of weapons. But as far as like who they go with, I just want the best weapon. I don't care if it's if it's Bowers. I don't care if it's Odunze, but I am on board. I like it. I'm a fan. It's going to be a lot of conversation here coming in. Uh, Jamizi says, if we pick up another offensive lineman, we can draft the next best player versus need is so much better. If you want Bowers, you have to trade down and get more picks. I like the idea of trading down and getting a second round pick because if I can move down, if the, if the, if you're not taking tackle at number 10, if that's sort of the decision, like let's say alt's there, then alt's probably the pick. If alt's not there and they don't love Fashanu and they, they don't want to go with the right tackle, then slide down a little bit. If Bowers is there, great. If not, go with a wide receiver. There's gonna be some good wide receivers. Brian Thomas Jr. is the one that I would like to look for in a trade down and then pick up your second round pick. That would be huge. That would be huge. Absolutely awesome. Chris Max says, Ryan's all jacked up on Mountain Dew. I'm ready to scissor kick you in the back of the head. <laughs> yeah, I'm drinking my Crescent Canna, which I should have my little ad play right now. Bam! If you want to drink, uh, do I not have a guy? There we go. If you want to drink uh, THC seltzer, 50 milligram Jets Talk promo code, uh, link is in the description down below if you want to get yourself some THC gummies, seltzers, maybe a little syrup. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I've enjoyed it, but that's what I'm sipping on right now. No Mountain Dew for Ryan. I'm trying to calm myself down. Man, I'm all jazzed up right now. Big Daddy says, so no one saw it coming, so let's call So let's call down and wait to see, calm down, and wait to see what happens. JD has stuff up his sleeve. Dude, I am all sorts of excited. Do we have a wide receiver trade coming in next? Are we going to sign someone? Now the Chargers have their situation coming around the clock at four o'clock. They have to get under the salary cap. They're $25 million over the cap from what I heard before. So if that's still the case, they are... They're going to have to release someone. They got four guys that are like saving them a ton of money if they cut them. Matthew says, kind of annoyed that we had Moses on the roster two years ago, and now we got to cough up picks to get him. Should have never let him go. More JD mismanagement. So Matthew, I will say this. I said it earlier in the stream. I don't think it's a mismanagement from Joe Douglas as much as it was like he invested in Mekhi Becton and Becton was going to be that right tackle. And, and Moses was going to demand starting, you know, he wants to start. That was his whole thing. They, the Jets wanted him back to compete with Becton, but he's like, no, I can start somewhere else. So the, the whole issue stems back to drafting Mekhi Becton and him getting hurt and the Jets just like having the hope that he's going to continually get better and, and he'll stay healthy the whole season because the whole hope was that he was going to be your 10-year starter at, at left or right tackle. And it just did not work out that way, unfortunately. Um, let's see, we've got r and r throwing some bananas on the screen. I got my banana icon coming up right here bam banana land baby let's go chris says you prefer brian thomas over keon coleman i do i prefer uh brian thomas over keon coleman i wouldn't be upset with either i think brian thomas is going to go a lot higher than keon coleman i think coleman's probably there in the second so if you want to take your tackle in the first round or another offensive lineman or maybe a bowers in the first round and a wide receiver in the second round the jets are just like screw the offensive line we got enough <laughs> we're just gonna go i don't know Going to be wild. Going to be wild. Just crazy. Justin crazy. Sorry. Thank you so much for the super chat. Comes in, says, see what Brees tweeted today. I did not see what Brees tweeted today. Let's go over and see what Brees tweeted today. Brees Hall. Made my day 22 minutes ago. Let's go, Brees. <laughs> Let's go. Retweets the Morgan Moses grade. His 88.4 run blocking grade ranks sixth amongst all offensive tackles could you imagine having avt at right guard and morgan moses at right tackle we're gonna knock the ever-loving piss out of people oh let's go i'm ready for this ah uh, let's go throws up prayer hands love it love it love it love it love it love it Brees hall happiest man in the room right now aside from <laughs> all the jet fans that are losing their mind i love this i absolutely love it this is huge Boys and girls, if you're hitting this, hit that like button. $5.5 million is the contract that you have for Morgan Moses for this year. I expect the Jets to probably uh, restructure that contract, restructure that deal, so that way you don't have to worry about next year. And he's only 33 years old. There's still plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of tread left on those tires. Hater comes in. 
Hater says, Ryan, my brother, JD, will not go into the draft with a hole at left tackle. I expect another move also. Wide receiver is a top priority to give the Jets flexibility entering the draft. I completely agree. I think there's an argument for the Jets to just say, like, look, we're good on, uh, you know, not that we're good on wide receiver, but I think you can add, like, a, a lower end one. Like, let's say they wanted to add, like, a DJ Moore. It doesn't necessarily solve a whole lot but at least it gives you another like tall option. I would like to go, ah, man. Okay, so it depends what you want to do with your third, right? Because in, in the third, if you want to go with a guard to sit behind or compete with a John Simpson, I like that move a lot. Uh, if you want to go with that, maybe in the fourth round, and then instead in the third round, you wind up going with your wide receiver. If Brendan Rice is there, that would be incredible. Ah, be awesome. Bill Adams pumped up Ryan. <laughs> JBZ, THC and sugar. That's exactly what it is. I'm juiced. 24 grams of sugar. It's sweet. It's watermelon uh, watermelon lemonade. <laughs> That's where I'm sitting right now. Uh, Radimus Prime says, mmm, milk thumbs, boys and girls. Hit them milk thumbs. Mmm, milk thumbs. That's what I want to see. Justin Thomas dropping a 50 spot. Thank you, brother. That's what I'm talking about. Justin says, O-line is deep in this draft. Trading down is the way to go unless one of the wide receivers are there. Also, we have been looking at first round quarterbacks, so you can't rule out that either. I got a feeling a splash wide receiver move is coming. Love the show and our Jets family. Thank you, Justin, so much for this. So let's talk this. Trading down, I 100% want to do that. Let's get the second round pick. Offensive tackle is off the table, maybe. I think it's probably... Uh, Less likely at number 10 now. It gives you some more flexibility, especially if you bring in a Bakhtiari and you have AVT as your emergency tackle. Then you groom Warren. Hopefully he can take over at left tackle or right tackle, either one. Mitchell, maybe that gives the, like a little bit more development time for him and maybe he can do something. Either way, I'm feeling good. Feeling really good here. Love the idea of trading down. First round quarterbacks is interesting. Could you possibly see the Jets taking a quarterback in the first round? I did not really consider it. And I don't really want to, to be honest. I'd rather take a mid-round swing at a quarterback, especially when Rodgers is talking about playing two, three, four more seasons. Oh, man, it'd be, it would be hard to take a quarterback that early. I don't really want to see them do that. And as far as we could see a splash move for a wide receiver like happening, let's trade down a few picks. Let's pick up a second-round pick and send a first for fucking Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> let's go. Let's do it, baby. That's what I want to see. Get me Brandon Ayuk. Get me someone that's like locked, stocked, and loaded. I am all sorts of jazzed up on this. Boys and girls, hit those milk thumbs. Proud New York Jets fan comes in. Thank you so much for the super chat. Says, I was told JD was asleep when he didn't make six moves in three hours into tampering. To those fans, shut it. Breeze 2K loading now. Dude, Breeze 2K is happening this year. It's going to happen. He's going to get 2,000 yards. He's got to be jazzed up. He's going to be running along that right-hand side behind, behind AVT, behind Moses. Moses parting the water. That's what he's going to do. He's going to throw his hands up and just whoosh, defense split side to side. Morgan Moses. Oh, this is a great trade. <laughs> Tra basically, trading down from the fourth round, in the fourth round, trading down from the fourth round, 112, down to pick 134. So you drop down 22 picks and you give them a sixth round pick. Done, done, done. <laughs> Absolutely done. I love this. I love this move. Big fan of it. Morgan Moses, welcome home. Ah, uh, see, DJ Shark. That's what I meant. I don't know what I was saying. What, what did I say before? DJ Moore. I didn't mean DJ Moore. DJ Shark. Ah, uh, very, very happy with this one. I'm talking all over the place here. Let's get your thoughts. Richard Allen says, the Jets have nepotism issue with Zach and all these bums from San Francisco, Green Bay. Joe and Salah has gotten. So the uh, things of note, the uh, Isaiah Oliver is actually a connection to, not a connection to Salah, but a connection to Ulbrich. And then, yeah, of course, like, that's the whole benefit. You, you get players that you are associated with at potentially slightly lower deals. Like, I'm on board with this. Let's go. Bring in all the guys that you know. I don't love the Kinlaw contract. I will say that. The Kinlaw contract caught me off guard. I was shocked it was as high as it was. John says, so if we trade for Mike Williams or Keenan Allen and get either uh, Bakhtiari or Trevin, uh, Smith, Tyron Smith, uh, for left tackle, we should go weapon at number 10. Yes, weapon or trade down. I like the idea of trading down more. And if you can, look, Brian Thomas is a big, fast wide receiver. 
You get him at like pick 14, 15, 16, somewhere in that realm and let someone else come up for a quarterback, pick up a second round pick. That's what I would want. Or if you want to just roll with Bowers, screw it, let's score all the points. Jets wanted a tight end last year. Could totally see it. Bacon says, offensive tackle at the 10th pick and get Bakhtiari in uh, if the contract is not too expensive. We need the depth. I think Bakhtiari is definitely going to come in. It's just a matter of how much we're going to end up paying. Boys and girls, I'm going to put a new poll question in the chat because you guys are hyped up on the uh, uh, free agency period right now. Let's do this. Let's say, what do we want to do? What do we want to do at pick 10? And you guys can vote. I'm curious to see what the overwhelming majority of the chat thinks. So what are we going to do? We're going to say, uh, we'll say O tackle. We'll say wide receiver. We'll say tight end. I guess I could just say Bowers. <laughs> I don't, don't have to say tight end. Bowers. Uh, we'll say trade down. All right, so you guys can vote on that in the live chat. I'm excited to see what your thoughts and feelings are on this. Uh, let's go to J-Boy. J-Boy drops in with the $2 super chat, says, fix the O-line now, draft Brock at 10. It is so easy. And then, uh, I guess that duplicated that super chat. But either way, it's interesting. I think it opens the door. I like Bowers. I've been talking about Bowers at 10 since like mid-January. Or no, end of January. Whenever the Jets season ended, I released my five players to watch for at number 10, and Bowers was on that list. I was like, it's going to be a hot button one, but I think the Jets might do it. I think it's possible. I'm a fan. Uh, Justin says, no sense in taking one now. If worst case scenario, we suck and everyone gets ejected from the cockpit, new <laughs> management would probably find their own guy quarterback anyway. Yeah, I don't want to take quarterback at the top of the draft. I would take one like mid rounds, like fourth or later. Um, as like a sort of stab in the dark type pick. But if Rodgers is saying two, three, four more years, they might just say, screw it. Let's let's roll with a quarterback after next year. Like we're going to roll with Rodgers at least one additional season. I think the plan was always to play at least three years and then see how he plays, you know, on a year to year basis. Uh, Kyle Kyle says, the only thing more important than getting younger at O-line is getting proven guys. And that's Moses. Let's go. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Morgan Moses is 100% the, uh, the rock solid stud from a health perspective and from a quality perspective that the Jets needed to get in this free agency period or trade. And I, I love it. Uh, Jay Slimy says, honestly, I'd go for a weapon for Aaron Rodgers. He can deal with a slightly worse offensive lineman due to his pre-snap processing. I completely agree. And, and that's sort of my argument with the uh, the sacks or, the, or not the sacks, but the penalties that John Simpson was giving up. A lot of those were holding penalties and those tend to occur when you have a quarterback that holds onto the ball too long and you have to now hold your, your block for fucking six seconds or something crazy like that. Aaron Rodgers is going to get the ball out close to two, two and a half seconds. So it's going to neutralize a lot of the issues on the offensive line that we did see. So I am a big, big fan of this. And I, uh, I'm a fan. That's it. I, I just, I'm a fan. This was a home run move by, <laughs> by Joe Douglas. You can't even get me talking right. AJ Spaz, loving this trade. I, let's just hope the line gets to gel together. They will. As long as you have, uh, guys that are consistent, it's consistency is the, the biggest key, right? Guys that are healthy, John Simpson stayed healthy, hasn't had an injury. Morgan Moses has been healthy, hasn't had an injury. Now you just hope Titman, AVT, two guys you have penciled in as your starters, those guys stay healthy, and then you got to figure out left tackle. I do think Bakhtiari is likely coming in at some point. It's just a matter of how much that contract's going to be, and I'm sure it'll be incentive-laden anyway. Uh, Bino says, DJ Chark, 50 catches, 500 yards and five touchdowns with shit quarterback play. With Aaron Rodgers, he could be 60 to 7 to 800 yards with 8 to 10 touchdowns. I do like that. We have his wide receiver coach here. So if you want to go with the DJ Shark on a $5 million contract because he had a down year in Carolina, Carolina was a shit show. I very much would like to see him with Aaron Rodgers, and I think the the body frame is the size that I would want to. I think he's six foot four, six foot five. Definitely a fan of that. Rigo the Pup says, are we really trading for Allen or Williams to take on that cap hit? I could see us do it as long as they redo the contract or if they'd outright be released. So I do think if we do make a move for either one of those, I don't think Allen's going to be on the trade block. I think he gets extended and restructured and stays in uh, LA. But Mike Williams, if you were to trade for him, you can't keep him on his salary cap hit for this year. I think it's like, I want to say it's a $14 million hit, if I'm not mistaken, or a $15 million hit if he's traded. I would rather get him in free agency or trade with a new contract in place. I'm not going to not gonna roll with that just one more. Uh, I don't want, 
I don't want him on his current contract. Uh, Venmung Gaming. Venue Gaming. Whew, sorry. Breeze 2K. Garrett, 10 touchdowns. Let's do it, baby. Mitt Flair, we got our starting right tackle. You damn right we did. Harry W., is this poll assuming we sign a left tackle? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Let's just see. I just want to see what, as of today, where we stand today, what do you want to do with the number 10 overall pick? Hit that vote right now. It's pretty much a, ah, it's close to a dead heat. Not, not as close as, as some of the other ones. But uh, offensive tackle and trade down are the two that are kind of on the uh, the minds of people right now. Red John says, Huff to McDonald, Ruckert to Bowers equals wasted pick. Um, all right. I, I understand what you're saying, but I think the argument is that we'd lose Conklin after this year and it would be Bowers and Ruckert as opposed to a situation where you lose like Huff. Uh, Cameron says, now I want Bakhtiari to go along with him. I do. I want Bakhtiari. I've been saying Bakhtiari since last year. I thought he was going to be part of the trade for Rodgers and it didn't end up happening. But I think it's, uh, I would be all on board for Bakhtiari. I think the injury history, you always roll the dice on offensive linemen in free agency and there's always going to be a red flag. It's going to be an injury. It's going to be a personality thing. It's going to be an age. It's going to be something like that. Well, guess what? The age is, is not so much a problem. If you believe the health uh, reports and his injury is actually factored out and you don't have to worry about it. Remember he had fluid on the knee in September before that it was like a year prior that he had any sort of knee issue. So I don't know. I, I, I like him. I would bring him in. Uh, Grove comes in and says, I guess they just can't get rid of Zach Wilson Two draft picks for a piece of human furniture or uh, for, <laughs> for a piece of furniture. Uh, we threw out last year. That's the best he could do. Okay. We needed him. I get it. Uh, so you don't seem very thrilled on, uh, on Morgan Moses. I'm, I'm pumped. I like the Morgan Moses signing. As far as Zach, I don't know what happens in terms of a trade. Rodgers did say if, if Zach wants to be back, he'll be back. I just, I don't, I don't know if I, I buy that. Jay Spector says Joe Milton uh, would pick 134. I wouldn't mind taking Joe Milton like late, late in the draft. That's kind of like a real stab in the dark. That would be like, I mean, maybe he learns from like a Tyrod Taylor with the, with the speed and stuff like that. High upside, that's someone you could definitely stash on the practice squad. I don't see Joe Milton being like a highly desirable player. He kind of stinks <laughs> to some degree, but he's athletically, he's pretty fast. Uh, Sif so says, pick number 10 all comes down to the best prospect there. If Fashanu and Alt are off the board, I don't see the value in taking a Fuaga or JC Latham now that we've done our due diligence on Bowers or Odunze. Uh, yeah, look, if Odunze is there, that would probably be my pick. I don't, I have a hard time believing he's going to make it to 10. Um, and I would almost prefer to trade down and get a Brian Thomas Jr. plus a second round pick. And then you have maybe a developmental tackle. Maybe then you take a, a Jordan Morgan or a uh, a Patrick Paul or something along those lines uh, in the second round that you can develop behind either a Bakhtiari or a Morgan Moses. And you kind of let it go that way. I wouldn't mind that that situation. Uh, or you take a wide receiver in the second round, maybe like a Malachi, uh, not a Malachi Corley, a uh, Lad McConkey or... Um, I don't know. There's just so many possibilities if you trade down. Justin Thomas! What's up, brother? Thank you for the super chat. It says, we put too much faith in Rucker. Love the kid and the family, but he hasn't produced. I don't think that's a, a knock towards him, though. I think it's, I think the, uh, with Rucker, it's more Conklin and Uzama in front of him, and we saw Uzama get phased out and obviously released this past offseason or th this current offseason. So now you got Conklin and Rucker, and I would I would love to move Rucker more into the fullback role, like that H back role, and get him on the field more. I like him. I'm a fan. I think he is going to be good, and I think he is good right now. I th you can make an argument that he's one of our best. Well, I mean, obviously two tight ends, but uh, I like him, and I think he will produce with Aaron Rodgers. I think having Zach has stymied the entirety of the offense. Wild Wave comes in with Super Chat, says, offense going through Brees. Pick 10 is going to be a weapon. I'm I'm on board with pick 10 being a weapon. I can't wait. I'm going to make a new mock draft. <laughs> I'm like all sorts of giggly and excited now, hoping that uh, the right stuff happens and things shake out the way it does. But dude, oh, Brees 2K. It's happening. It's happening. He's pumped. He's going to run behind AVT and Morgan Moses, and they're just going to part the Red Seas. Greg Tarr says, Moses returns. From the mountain with the 11th commandment, thou shalt not sack the vice president. Oh, Greg, <laughs> I love it. I'm writing it down. I'm writing it down. We're going to get some new merch drops with all this stuff. This is great. 11th commandment. All right. Jotting a note down. 
and that was Greg Tarr. If you guys come up with a good shirt idea and you want to send it to me, and I think it's a really good idea and I start making them, I'll send you a free shirt. That's I'm totally uh, about that. But it has to be uh, an original idea. <laughs> I don't want to get a bunch of the same idea from uh, the same people. Vincent says, about time, I would still get another offensive lineman and then definitely trade back for more picks. I would like to see McGovern come back and I would like to see Bakhtiari come in. If you go into the draft like that, at least, then I feel confident if you want to go weapon, then AVT is the emergency tackle, the break glass in case of emergency tackle, if you will. And then if you want to go with your center, you have Morgan, uh, you have um, McGovern and Titman and Wes Schweitzer that can all play center. This gives you a lot of flexibility. I am a, a big, big, big fan. A Stu says, Ryan, trading down does not mean we won't sign a left tackle with first pick. It just means we are trying to get a second. Yeah, no, I agree. I 100% agree. I think it's definitely in play. I just think you're probably not going after a Fashanu or an alt at that point. You're probably looking more, uh, I mean, could you imagine like a, a Marius Mims? I really like a Marius Mims. But if I'm trading down, I don't know if there's as sure of a thing at tackle. I'd probably be more likely to take a, de I don't want to say a developmental tackle, but maybe one that has to sit a year in the second round and get me someone that's going to like immediately impact the, uh, the draft right now. Uh, AG Jets says, telling you, Ryan, Devontae's coming. No way he plays with Aiden O'Connell. Um, <laughs> oh, cockle. <laughs> um, I do think the Raiders are going to try and move heaven and earth to get up and get Jaden Daniels. So I don't think Aiden O'Connell is actually going to be their quarterback. And worst case scenario, it's going to be uh, Gardner Minshew. So, I mean, I would like to see Devontae say, I, I need a trade out of here. I want to win now. And if we're not going to be going for the win now thing, like, I'm okay hopping out, but he likes Pierce. So I think it would be, it might be tough to see him, uh, you know, ask for a trade at this point. Ron says, we are getting Bakhtiari. Roger's good friend. It is happening. 100%, 100%. Vincent says, if we sign Tyron Smith, we have a Super Bowl caliber O-line. If they're going to go after Tyron Smith, I think they're going to go after Bakhtiari first. That's just my guess because of the whole Rogers connection. Dustin says, Ryan, do you think they'll give Lazard another go? He has timing with A-Rod and Zach had zero timing. I do think they value Lazard at a higher uh, degree than the fans do because of this exact reason. And I think Rogers is probably being, uh, you know, talked to and just saying like, hey, you know, is this, who do you want? Do you want this? He's been saying we need to add a wide receiver. So I don't think it's necessarily a lock that it's going to be, uh, you know, Lazard staying there. But I think Lazard has a little bit more, a um, little bit more love to him because of Rodgers coming back. Jim Monster comes and says, "Great move from our New York Jets. Do you think the Jets will maybe trade for Khalil Mack to help out the pass rush after losing Huff? I would not trade for Khalil Mack. That would be, a, in my opinion, a misallocation of resources because you're going to have to pay him a good amount of money. And what are you going to give him? Like the Von Miller deal that he got from Buffalo? That's a monster contract. So I would say no. I'm out on uh, bringing in a, a high expensive." edge rusher at this point. Radimus Prime says, I'm guessing Zach diddled a lot of Jets fans' moms in the chat. <laughs> a lot of people upset with Zach in the chat today. Isaac says, this move gives so much flexibility now at the number 10 pick. It absolutely does. This is something we did not see coming. Did not see coming. Milton is athletic with arm strength. Similar to Zach, he also plays like Zach. Would have, uh, would have to be a huge development project. So that's why you sit him for a bunch of years. And that and if Rodgers is planning on playing at least two years, maybe you sit like wait one additional year. We've talked about Pratt. Pratt's a really good pick somewhere in like the third or fourth round. It depends how high they want to go with the pick. Because outside of the first round, it does start to get significantly lower chances that you're going to get a quarterback that hits. So if you have higher positions of need, like let's say you need a guard in the third round, I'd rather us take Zach Zinter at guard to have a long-term replacement uh, potential. And then, you know, then take a quarterback in the third. That would be my, uh, my, I would, I would have an issue with, with going quarterback too early. Mars says, why didn't Douglas just keep Mars, Moses instead of having to trade for him? Is Douglas going to trade back for Bryce Huff in a couple years? Douglas never goes the long-term players. No, he wanted Moses. The Jets wanted to keep Moses. The, what happened was the Jets, uh, Moses wanted to start and the Jets were like, Hey, we've got Makai Becton here. Like there's gotta be a competition. Best guy's going to play. And Moses is like, no, I'm being signed to be a starter. And that's why Douglas, like, I'm sure Douglas is kicking himself. He's like, man, if I had just taken Wurfs, you know, one, you probably wouldn't have had Moses at all, but you would have, the whole Becton thing, 
absolutely hurt us from a retention standpoint of bringing back George Fant, of bringing back Morgan Moses. It's because we always had that hope that he was going to be the next best thing. And it just, it didn't work out. You know, I don't blame them. I don't blame Becton. It's injuries happen. It just, it sucks. Really, really frustrating. Owen says left tackle will be filled in free agency and JD will draft a mid round depth tackle as he always does. 10 should be adding a great weapon for Rogers. Something green Bay never did. This is writing the wrong. I told you guys when we were trading for Rogers, I guarantee the pick we give up, we're going to give you the Tom Brady treatment. We're going to get you the players you want because you guys know players. We're going to load up all these weapons. We're going to go all in for the time you're here. Oh, and by the way, the, I, I know we won't have a first round pick because we're trading for you right now, but we'll use our top pick on a weapon for you the same way Green Bay never did. And then lo and behold, everything happens and the Jets wind up with a first round pick and it's number 10 overall. And you can get an elite weapon and oh, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. I think it's absolutely going to be a weapon. I really do. And I think it's going to be, uh, I think there's a, definitely a shot at Bowers. I like the idea of trading down and taking a wide receiver. This is a deep wide receiver class. I don't want to, uh, I don't, Brian Thomas Jr. would be my pick. If you could trade down, give me a second plus uh, Brian Thomas Jr. That would be, that would be awesome. Matt, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, get Bakhtiari. Trade for a wide receiver, then trade down in the draft. Have a drink and enjoy life. Always love the videos. Matt, thank you. Cheers. Oops, sorry, product placement. Boom. <laughs> thank you, brother. Much appreciated. I had someone send me a super thanks in my comments the other day. I was like, oh, I'll take the girls out for ice cream. <laughs> They'll be pumped. Still a little cold right now for ice cream, but I'll uh, I'll take them out. Uh, Adam comes in with super chat says, can you still trade for Bowles and or Sutton? I think it's less likely that Denver wants to do that because they're getting, I don't, I don't know what their current cap space is. Let me take a look, see if I could find this out. Um, I think they're a lot closer to the cap now and it's not as pressing of a need. Oh yes, they got $44 million in cap space right now. So they're not gonna, based on all the restructures, I would say Sutton and, uh, Sutton and Bowles are not going anywhere. So I think you're probably looking at Bakhtiari realistically. Knifey Spoonie comes in with Super Chat and says, would you consider using a first for Higgins? I would consider it, I guess. Um, I like the idea of having a four or five year cheaper contract wide receiver as opposed to paying Higgins a ton of money. Um, Higgins does get a little banged up too. I wouldn't, have, I, I really wanted Higgins as a free agent. As a trade, I'm kind of out on him. Um, now let's say there's a trade where Hey, uh, Cincinnati, you're sitting there at 18. You want to come all the way up to number 10? You want to get yourself a Brock Bowers or maybe the top right tackle to protect your expensive Joe Burrow quarterback? Well, give me T. Higgins in the trade down. So I'll take 18 and uh, T. Higgins. And then the Jets can take a, a Marius Mims or a, you know, whoever falls to them at pick 18. I would do that. If there's a move for Higgins, it's a, it's a trade down for me. That's what I would prefer. Uh, John says, I like Joe Milton, but as a sixth or seventh round pick, he can always learn a couple of years, get better with his accuracy. He's the most athletic in this draft of all the quarterbacks and probably has the strongest arm. That, that's why I would like take a late round stab. Like if you want to take a Mr. Irrelevant pick and like use it on Joe Milton, you have him under contract. I'm totally fine with that. And I look, it is a long shot. Any quarterback you take outside of like the top two rounds is going to be a long shot. So by all means, you know, if you think it's, a shot, you know, let's call it a 2% shot. And every other position you're going to look at is a 5% shot of working. Take the shot on the 2%. That's what I would do. George says trade down and draft. Lad McConkey would be sick. Lad is blowing up his pro day from what I've heard. Uh, senior bowl, combine, everything like that. Just absolutely awesome to see how well he has done. Boys and girls, we've got over 600 people watching across platforms. Make sure you hit that like button. Let's get this over 300 likes. Uh, what? How long have we been doing this for? I don't want to go too crazy long in the event that people want to rewatch this. Um, or maybe I'll I'll trim it down. I'll trim it down. I'll make a shorter video. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm excited for this. So boys and girls, left tackle to right tackle. Right now, as it's penciled in, I think you'd have to say AVT is left tackle right now until you get a Bakhtiari or a draft pick. Then you have John Simpson at left guard. You have Titman at center. Right guard, ah, oh God, I guess you, you need one offensive lineman regardless. So AVT is either playing right guard or left tackle. That's what it comes down to. Where do they see him? How do they value it? I would love, love, love to see some additional offensive linemen brought in, but you don't have to do it at number one now. 
So the Jets trade for Morgan Moses and a fourth round pick. They slide down 20 picks in the fourth round. They give up a sixth round pick to get a starting caliber right tackle. That is elite at blocking for the run. Brees Hall is going to run through a goddamn brick wall. <laughs> Eric says, why is everyone okay with Bakhtiari? He's injury prone and failed his medical. Us Jet fans know best that we can't rely on injury prone players. That's true. Uh, it depends if the injury is healed. If the injury is healed, the injury, like the surgeries he's had have all been from that one injury. So if it, if it is corrected with the fluid on the knee, then it's a little less of a concern. But if you have a tackle that's brought in and you already have your tackle here in Morgan Moses, now you have the emergency tackle in AVT. Strickland says, if you can fill left tackle competently, having the freedom to pick Bowers or a wide receiver would be nice. I completely agree. Mike, the stats guy, thank you for the super chat, says, I still think the Jets should sign Zeitler to play right guard to play with Moses. Played together the last two or three years, ABT at left guard, Simpson as a backup for Shanu at 10. That would be really good. That would be a wild offensive line. I like the idea of bringing Zeitler in, but I don't know if they're going to do that. And like, because they just paid a lot of money, a lot of money for Simpson. Simpson's two years, $18 million. $9 million backup would be, I'd be pissed. <laughs> I'd be super mad at that. Uh, so I would say no, I don't, I don't want to see that at this point. Zeitler's probably off the table. AVT at right guard would be my preference, uh, unless they want like a Zinter in the middle rounds as their, their right guard and AVT kicks out. I don't want to see AVT at tackle though, personally. Uh, Dyke Tyson, Moses and AVT on the right side, get a stud left tackle and Brees is running for 2000 fucking yards this season. Let's F and go. I completely agree. Look, the Jets are absolutely going to kick down the doors with Brees Hall this season. As a receiver, he's going to get over 2,000 yards. It's going to happen. If I'm a betting man, as long as he plays in every game, he is going to be an absolute freak this season. Justin Thomas! Oh, thank you so much for the super chat of 50 spot. Dude, you are absolutely awesome. Showing love today. You, Matt, and Bean are some of my favorite Jets content creators. I listen to the show while I'm at work. It definitely makes the time pass, so thank you. Also, can I be entered in baggage claim this week? Much love. Absolutely. I got you. I'm writing you down. You know what? Let's do this. If you guys hang around, let's do... Let's do a little baggage claim. Can I do baggage claim? I don't know if I could do it from this page. Ah, damn it. I can't. <laughs> I can't do it from here. I have uh, I have my scene set up on my stream deck for a three-way uh, scene, so it won't actually populate. But, oh, dude, this is awesome. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, so you are included on baggage claim, 100%. I'll throw you on there. I'll actually, I'll put all these guys on a, on a baggage claim. And you know what I'll do? I want to do, let me see if I can switch over. How does this look? It may look kind of goofy when I do this, but if I switch over to the spin wheel, right now. Okay, let's do this. Anyone that sends in a super chat will be we'll do we'll do a spin wheel. We'll do a not not each super chat, but we'll do a uh we'll do all the names. So, Justin, you'll be in there 5 times. We'll do it for every every $10. We'll say that way I don't have a zillion <laughs> $2 ones come flying in. Uh Oh, but yeah, you're added, dude. And actually, Justin, you've given... No, you know what? Hold on. You know what? We're going to change this. I'm going to do it for Justin because he's had... Uh, he sent in $250 Super Chats. That is far, far, far too generous. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's spin a wheel. Let's see what you're going to get here. <laughs> Justin, make sure you reach out to me. Oh, he gets a shirt. Justin Thomas. Justin, reach out to me on... Uh, Jets talk 24 seven at gmail.com. I'll get you a shirt. I'll send it over to you. We'll get you one from uh, either store, whichever one you want to go to. Uh, very much appreciated. Very much appreciated. Far, far, far too generous. Uh, boys and girls, the New York Jets have signed, traded, traded for Morgan Boses, trading down 20 picks in the fourth round and a sixth round pick. And they got a starting right tackle. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Adam comes in. All wide receivers and Bowers are on the board. Who you got? If all the well, if all the wide receivers are on the board, I'm taking Marvin Harrison Jr., then Neighbors, then Odunze, then Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, Bowers somewhere in there. 
I, I don't know if I have. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm planning on three of the wide receivers off the board. If one of the three are there, I would lean strongly on that uh, spot. If uh, Bowers is there, I think you consider it, but if someone wants to come up for a Bowers, I'd rather trade down. I feel more confident trading down than I do uh, taking Bowers at 10 right now. Franco, I just dropped in. Does this change our draft strategy? Only Joe and Ollie are true left tackles. With us likely getting Bakhtiari or Smith, now uh, can now draft focusing, uh, not draft focusing on need. If Rome drops to 10, you got to take him. I like Rome at 10 if he's there. I think he goes nine to the Bears right now, but uh, I got to see how free agency shakes out, who gets signed and, and whatnot, and what the Bears actually do. Maybe they do something different at the top of the draft. That would be crazy. Um, but I very much would like to see um, the draft strategy where we get a weapon. I want a weapon. I really do. Uh, Seth says, any chance the Jets could sign Justin Simmons or is he too much money? Well, the Jets just brought back Chuck Clark. We have Tony Adams. You'd think both those guys will end up starting. It depends what Simmons would want for a contract. I don't think the Jets are going to spend a ton of money. Alex says, discount, double check, motherfucker. Let's do it. Discount, double check, motherfucker. <laughs> That's from the Aaron Rodgers stream last year. Oh, thank you, brother. I appreciate seeing that. Uh, Mike Sackai says, yeah, Simpson is $6 million this year. That's backup money. So he's, I, I, I don't see like the structured contract breakdown. I saw it was two years, $18 million. So if it's $6 million this year, that's not bad. That's not terrible. That could be backup money for sure. Strickland says Bakhtiari and Donovan Smith on cheaper deals for left tackle. Same price as the top left tackle we couldn't get. Um, I would take Bakhtiari over Donovan Smith all day. I don't I don't want Donovan Smith at all. It's great he's a Jet fan, but I don't think he's a good football player. I uh, would not go with a Donovan Smith here. John says, if Brees is drinking what you're drinking, he's getting 2,500 yards. I love it. This actually, this is not an energy drink. <laughs> This is a calm Ryan down drink. Ah, tasty. Tasty, tasty. Fresh says, get her big for guard. I wouldn't hate that. Is he a free agent right now? Red John says, JJ and Penix moving up draft boards. If the Chargers take a receiver or Bowers, all might slide. If they decide to go with a weapon at five or even a right tackle. I mean, there's no, you, they could absolutely go with the JC Latham or a, a Fuaga in that capacity because they have Slater or uh, not Slater. Is it Slater? Slater, Stanley, Slater. Stanley's the, the Ravens one. Uh, if they go that route, then alt could definitely fall. I have a hard time thinking the Titans are going to go a different route other than offensive line. That was the one I kind of penciled in for O-line for a long time, but we did hear some of the comments made about them possibly wanting a weapon instead. If that's the case, if Alt's there at 10, you sit and take Alt. That's the move. Or you feel more confident moving up to go get Alt. Like, let's say uh, if the Chargers wanted to screw around. I don't know what it would cost. That's probably too much money. You'd probably have to... If he gets to 8, I think the Jets would, would want to make a move up. Vincent says, trade for Allen, please. Oh my God, Garrett and Keenan Allen would be ridiculous. I think Keenan Allen gets extended in... Uh, in LA. I don't think he actually becomes available. Uh, I would be surprised at least. Oh, he said, Strickland said, I meant Bakhtiari and Smith as injury insurance. Uh, talking about, sorry, I'm trying to remember which chat that was. Uh, I think I clicked out of it. Sorry, dude. Dyke Tyson says, I wonder if Chicago shocks everyone, goes Marvin Harrison Jr. at one and uses pick nine to move up and grab their quarterback. That's the kind of draft drama I live for. Would love to see it. I think it's possible, sort of. I don't think, I think if they want a quarterback, they got to take the quarterback at one. If they're going to roll at fields, I would trade down to like three or four, I think. And then you take Marvin Harrison Jr. there. I don't think I think there's too much value at number one overall to uh, not go quarterback or trade out for a quarterback while also keeping Justin Fields. That seems like a very bad decision. Um, or well, not not that you're saying that you're saying you know draft Marvin Harrison Jr. at one, trade up from nine. 
I mean, they got the picks to do it, but I would just take your quarterback first and take, because I'm not, I'm not locked in on Marvin Harrison Jr. being some generational wide receiver that's going to be so much better than some of the other wide receivers in this class. Like, I like a lot of wide receivers that are going to go in the first round of this class. I would have just been very happy with a Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, as maybe the highest floor type player, but Neighbors would be a number one receiver in any other class. Odunze is probably, you know, jockeying for position in that same same capacity. Mutlile says, Bears do that. They will lose Caleb. Uh, if they do that, they would... Well, yeah, they wouldn't get Caleb. They're not going to get him. But I don't know if Caleb necessarily wants to go there. I think there's a little bit of like... If I were the Bears, I would not take Caleb Williams at one. I would trade out, I think, or take a different quarterback. Like, I would take Jaden Daniels over Caleb. But I feel like you could, if you could say to, like, slide down to three, if you can get down to three, I think that's where Jaden Daniels goes. Or do you not just get, you? Know, it's one of those situations, too. If you just love a quarterback, just go and take him. I don't like Caleb Williams going to the Bears, though. I'm not a fan not a fan i feel like his uh there's too much of the drama like oh you know there's an arrogance about him like oh i don't need to do the workouts i don't need to eat like only you know only a handful of teams are going to be able to draft me so like you know go look at the tape i'm not even going to throw like that's not my guy that's not going to fly in the nfl dude so i don't uh, i wouldn't even touch caleb owen says i want dan feeney back as added interior defensive line depth he can play all three positions and played well when we needed him i love dan feeney that flow he had going on with the with the lettuce in the back oh special he was one of those glue guys for me i'm big on glue guys guys that are not necessarily top end players but kind of get the team locked in locked in glued together glue guy flex hayes says no games in denver means AVT for an entire season. Hope the O-line stays healthy as a whole and makes holes for Brees. Yeah, 100%. Brees Hall's gonna fucking bulldoze over people and I can't wait for it. Ah, uh, you know what? I wanna go to, let's go to the phone lines. Let's do the phone calls because I haven't done that in a minute. We'll go over here. Uh, phone line number is on the screen. If you guys wanna call in, we'll do the three minute timer. And then after three minutes, I will eject you. Let's see, go back to here. Can I do the three minute? I don't know if I can do the three minute timer on the screen. I may not have uh, set it up for that. Um, no, you know what I can do? I can copy and paste these sources. See, look at me go. Editing on the fly, baby. Back to the share screen. We're gonna do a little bit of this. A little bit of that. All right. Let's move that a little bit lower. Bam. All right. And I got to pin it in the comments. Give me just a second. I should have been prepared with this. I got, I got far too excited. <laughs> I wasn't able to set the stream up the way I wanted to. Oh, Ryan, what are you doing? Oh, I should say call into show. Bam. Okay. So let me pin this comment to the live chat. And then I will bring you in. Uh, I've got Mutt Vials on the line already. Excited for that. Give me one second, Mutt Vials. I'll bring you in. Let's see. Boom. Pinned comment. Right now, uh, poll question. I'm going to end the poll question. Eh, I'll keep the poll question going. Right now, 46% are still saying offensive tackle with the 10th overall pick. I'm a little surprised that much is skewed that way. I guess it's like a, you know, a very loud, smaller group of the fan base that is screaming for <laughs> a weapon at number 10. Everyone else is like, no, just double down. You got to be able to get the offensive line figured out. I can understand it. I can understand it. All right. Mud Vials, you ready to go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm not even going to do this. As long as I got people on the line, no, or no one's on the line right now, I'm going to talk to you, Mutt Files. So how are you feeling about Morgan Moses coming back? I'm very, very happy, honestly, because we need we need that right tackle, so this way Elijah Vera talking to stay at guard, because that means we're either going to sign or draft a left tackle, which means mm -hmm. Joel's on the table. Thank God. Because I'm probably the only person who doesn't want Bowers unless we have a receiver mm -hmm. and a left tackle. If we have that, I don't now care. Now, what, what about 
What about the people that would argue that Bowers is like a wide receiver, so he would fill the need of wide receiver anyway while still keeping the tight end room the same? Like, do you see that, or do you not want to, like, go that direction? The only reason why I don't want to see it, though, is because Conklin's not that bad, though, as a tight end. And the only other reason is because the last time a a tight end was taken in the top 10, it was Pitts. And I understand it was Arthur Smith. I don't want to waste that 10th pick on a tight end. And they don't use him correctly. Like, as much as we don't like him, though, look at McCall Harmon, though. Harmon's a speed Mm -hmm. demon. Can be an excellent slot guy, though, or be like what Tyreek Hill was. He just takes a little, like, two-yard slant or an easy, like, bubble screen, something like that. And they'll take it at least, so 15, 20 yards. And what happened? We don't know how to use him. That's the only thing I'm afraid of, though, with Bowers. Yeah, look, he's, I, he's, he's going to get the Kyle Pitts treatment. They're not going to use him. You know what? I would be terrified to have Hackett just say like, oh, I was surprised that this guy could catch the ball. <laughs> and we were using him for inline That's blocking the entire season. Like that, I mean, but you have Rodgers coming back. So like there's kind of, there's hope for that, right? The only thing that Rodgers did was make his career. That's it. That's what I feel like. You think so? That, he he would not be here. Well, I he definitely don't think. Thing with Denver. I was going to say, I definitely don't think he would be here if we weren't able to get Rodgers. Like, that was definitely, oh, like, not. the lore, for sure. And I understand him having the connection with, uh, you know, Salah or whatever, but I just think it, I don't know. What do you think uh, we do with our third-round pick? Like, does that change anything? Do you, Would you trade down, or are you only, like, offensive tackling? I would trade down, yeah. It depends, yeah. though, like, what we do, though, in those spots. Like for receiver, you already know who I want though. Besides though, Justin Jefferson, you already know that with me. But I know if I we know. can get ourselves someone that's an, a good two to compliment Garrett and get Tyron Smith, I'm fine though with training down. I have no problem with it. Mm. Yeah, because like you go- have Conklin, you have Ridley. Not really, what's his name? Jeremy Ruckner, Ruckner returning, and if mm-hmm. anything, you can either sign another tight end or you have Kenny Yaboa that came back. You have Zach Coons. You just have a bunch of young guys in there. That's it. And Tyler Conklin's just the older guy. That's really it, though, with that. And they've been there at least longer, so they know the system. And like mm-hmm. you said, though, you just kick Rockner to fullback if you want to. And then yeah, rock with your ball. I like him in that, cones. like, blocking role, but also, like, coming out of the backfield. Could you imagine having just, like, all your best weapons on the field at the same time? You have, you know, let's call it Garrett and Conklin and Rucker and Brees and, uh, you know, wide receiver in the first round or... Is there a traded for wide receiver that you would like be interested in at this point? Uh, we've heard Mike uh, Williams and Keenan Allen as potential like options, maybe. I was talking to my brother though. He wants Keenan Allen so bad in New York. I'm like, oh, I mean, Dude, it would be incredible. The only way I'm trading for him though is if he doesn't get released within the next what two hours. That's the only way. Yeah. The only way I take one of those charge receivers is if they're cut. Whoever That's kind of where I'm jump at. on them I... immediately. I don't care which one it is. The both injury prone anyway, but they're both Pro Bowl talent. Go get one of them. Yeah, I I like Mike Williams. The injury history scares me, so I would like to stay away from him if we can avoid it. Like, if we get a Tyler Boyd, I would probably prefer t- Tyler Boyd over a Mike Williams. Mike Williams healthy? All day. Love it. Keenan Allen becomes available. He's my He would be my number one choice. I think he's going to stay in L.A., though. I can see it, though, only because so he can retire a char- uh, Charger. That's really it. Yeah. He, yeah. he has a quarterback that he's playing for, though, with Justin Herbert that can definitely help out. Mm-hmm. But me... I wouldn't want to know any of them, really. That's just, I just want a receiver. That's it. Just to be next to <laughs> Give me a Garrett. weapon. I want someone opposite Garrett. I don't care who it is at this point. That, I, because we were I feel so like I just yesterday. want something to happen just to happen. Trade. Do you see, What if, like, Odell comes in? Like, how are you feeling about Odell's that? A three. I don't mind Odell as a three. I think that would be cool. What, it depends on the money. Odell. Um, what did he do really last year, though? Not that he much. He got 15 last year. Do you think you could get him for, like, seven, eight? I made that in a sense of then to get 15 to 20. Give him like a one year, maybe like the well, same Mooney type of deal it. that Kinlaw has, but make it an incentive to go up to 20. Man, that's a lot. I with uh so Mooney got 13 million a year. So I feel like even on a one year deal, Odell could probably get that. And I don't know yeah, which from a financial get, standpoint, I don't know how high I want to go on a wide receiver too. Are you gonna get the Giants or Rams version of Odell, or are you gonna get the Ravens version of Odell? The Browns version of Odell. That's the only question. I don't know. Ode- That's why I don't know if Odell was necessarily deal. bad as much as the offense wasn't so much focused on him. Um, as a three, I'm I'm open. I'm open to it. Mutt Viles, exactly. you have been ejected from the cock. <laughs> ah, chicken going across the screen. I love chicken. 
Uh, we got Joe and then Eric joining this show. Let's go over to Joe. Joe, how you doing, brother? Oh, did I not add you in? I didn't add you in. I added the wrong one. Boom, what's up, Joe? <laughs> hey, how's it going? I'm hanging in there. How you feeling about this Morgan Moses trade? Love it. Uh, a little irritated, though, because we had him at one point, so why not just re-sign him and keep him? Then to trade for him again. So but... I, I, I get the frustration with that, but the, the issue for me was that we just drafted Mekhi Becton. They wanted him. They saw his rookie year. They're like, this guy's going to be the future at one of the tackle spots. Morgan Moses had a great year for us. He's like, well, I've earned the right to start somewhere. So I'm either going to start for you here or I'm going to go somewhere else where I can start. I don't want to go into a yeah, competition. Yeah, that makes sense. It definitely makes sense. But, I mean, with all the holes we had, I feel like we could have had a spot for him at some point. Well, um, we still had Fant at that point, too. And that's why we lost Fant, too. Like, that's, honestly, that's we true. lost Fant and Moses because of our faith in Becton. That's what it was. That's true. Um, but I like it. I think at this point, what I really, really would like is the – I saw that Renfro is on the possibly mm. release mark. Yep. Trade a seventh, grab him, plug I, him in. Um, yeah, I saw he was going to be released. Get- I would like that. I don't know what his contract is. You'd probably want to restructure him. I want to upgrade from Randall Cobb in the slot, and I don't yep. want Gibson to be like the main starting slot yet. Yeah, and I agree with that. And then so my other idea is if we can somehow get Smith and then maybe go, hey, back Yari – Somebody gets mm-hmm. injured, we plug and play you. Great. Now we so, have, I feel like, a very, very good offensive line compared to last year. And mm-hmm. then we just go out and get Bowers. And then who cares about a number two receiver at that point? Because we have weapons. We put Rucker where the H back slot is. You have Renfro mm-hmm. in the slot. You've got Conkling. You've got Bowers. Yes, I would like a number two. But at that point, I feel like we have a competent or somebody would get open at some point. And mm-hmm. we were able to at least get the ball out. And then you have obviously mm-hmm. Brees Hall. And then the third round, let's go grab a receiver. Why overpay for a receiver when we can mm. go get players that we can slot in where we need? I'm on board with that. The only thing I would say, you said Tyron Smith and Bakhtiari. I don't think you can get both of them. I think you just you probably just get Bakhtiari, and then AVT winds up being your emergency kind of player. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it depends what the market is. If he's not healthy and he can't go, and then he's in training camp, and now he finally got cleared, I think mm-hmm. at that point you might be able to get Bakhtiari hey, link up with Aaron Rodgers, we'll give you the vet mm. minimum, we'll give you a heavily incentive base salary if you can come out. I think at that point, his market's dropped. I completely agree. Him. I think if he doesn't sign until close to training camp, I agree. You set your offensive line, you bring him in as an additional piece. I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens with Tyron Smith. <clears throat> like, maybe the Jets feel more confident with, like, I don't know. Because I, I have a hard time believing that Tyron Smith and Bakhtiari would both wind up being like cheaper <laughs> or like cheap enough for us to like oh, sign. I, but I like your plan. I, I like I Renfro a lot. I like the idea of going with like, you know, a Bowers and just having all the weapons. It, the Jets want home run talent. And I think that's that's exactly what you'd be getting with Bowers. No. Hey, all Ryan, right, dude. All I got to say is before you eject me really fast, uh, I've always been a fan of the show. This is my first call in and I really appreciate your content. So keep up the good work. I appreciate you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it a whole lot. And I'm frozen on the screen right now. <laughs> I can hear myself. Uh, but thank you so much, dude. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling in. I look forward to taking your call another time. And I'm still frozen over here. So let's see. I got a little backup camera action. Watch this. Watch this. This is how this is going to work. We're going to switch to the USB camera right here. <laughs> That'll work. We'll do that. Uh, Blitz crew drops in. Drop it. Five Jets talk memberships. Thank you, Blitz crew. Yeah. J-E-T-S. <laughs> jets, Jets, Jets. Uh, we got Eric backstage right now. Give me one second. I'm going to have to switch my uh, camera on the next source as well. Uh, boom. We'll go over here. I'm frozen. Pause, 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 pause. And we're back. <laughs> All right. Am I lagging? Hear me. You. You're a little laggy because of the software that I use. It's not like oh, it's a little frustrating, okay. but it makes it easier on my end. Um, Eric, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. How are you I feeling about the trade? So, I'm like cautiously optimistic because I have like a plan in my head. I was like, you know what? There's a few things that can be done. And I'm like, OK, we could we could be going somewhere. Mm-hmm. My thing is, I am so like hard on we cannot rely on Bakhtiari. We can't like. Mm. I get it. Injury might go like smoothly, but still, like five surgeries on a knee, it's it's crazy. Like we can't rely on him. We relied on Beckton. We saw what happened. Like I just want to draft mainly a left tackle and go like that route, and then maybe mm. sign a 
Adrian. But if we don't, and let's say we get like Tyrell Smith, which I'm way happier with, and then mm. get a weapon at 10, and then third round you get an offensive lineman depth, fourth round you go like something, maybe another defensive tackle. I don't know. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. I Well, so I like that move. I What I would do is if I'm the Jets, I open my possibilities up. Because I think like the last caller said, Bakhtiari signing closer to training camp is probably a little bit more realistic than signing right now if he can't pass a physical. So you have to plan for an offensive line without Bakhtiari. So you sit right. at number 10 and you wait to see if Alt, if Fashanu falls to you. If both are gone or you don't love maybe Fashanu, then maybe you can work out a trade down. Or then you have to, you know, I, I would love to trade down and pick up a second. If you could trade down, pick up a second, and then get like uh, an Amarius Mims or a uh, maybe a Fuaga falls or a Fashanu falls. I've seen a bunch of mocks where Fashanu is like available at 15. So like yeah. if you can get him somewhere there while picking up a second, that'd be cool. That would be cool. I think the most important thing is like try to fill as many holes as you can in free agency so it gives you flexibility in the draft. Because if mm -hmm. we have too many holes, like, oh, we need a weapon, but we also need that left tackle filled. And it, it doesn't give you room to do things like that. But I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like cautiously, like when I saw the Moses moves, I was like, okay, that's good. Because I didn't really want Jonah Williams, it's like overpriced, mm -hmm. not yep. overhyped. And like all these other players are like the money they're getting. I'm like, this is good. He shouldn't have. He should never have left our team, but it's mm -hmm. good. And like, let's let's let's. I have I have a good feeling about the rest of free agency. I'm cautiously optimistic. So, dude, I sat. I was sitting downstairs, and I like I just set up the stream. I was like, all right, I'll go live at like uh, you know twelve o'clock or whatever the time was. And I was like, I go downstairs. I'm eating some food. I look at my phone. Murray Moses sign. Holy shit! <laughs> my wife's <laughs> like, what are you doing? I'm like sprinting upstairs. I'm like, let's go. Yeah, I'm all pumped. I'm like far change. more energized for this move than I feel like I should be, but I, I love it. No, we because like look what we get excited about us Jets fans. We've been through so much. We see Morgan Moses like wow, what a signing! Like because we just want consistency and health. We so, just want something that's consistent all the time. I just want to know who my <laughs> offense. The, the Bills were bitching that they had their first offensive lineman get hurt in the playoffs. So I'll cry me a river. Oh. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for the call. You have been ejected. You're out from the cockpit boys and girls call in number is pinned in the live chat it is also on the uh, screen if you want to scan the qr code you can come in that way i'm going to end this poll who do we pick at number 10 the majority 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 said offensive tackle still so we'll wait and see and see what ends up happening with our new york jets now i got to move myself out of this because i look like i'm frozen and bam ryan's back over here all right Good thing I have two cameras set up. I don't know why that did that, but that's okay. We'll work, work through it right now. Um, all right. Oh, do I have to change the source over here too? Sorry. Now we'll keep that one going. That's all right. Um, all right. Morgan Moses, a little bit of recap for you guys that are just jumping into the stream. Ravens are sending starting tackle. Morgan Moses to New York Jets as part of a pick swap. The Jets get Morgan Moses and a fourth round pick. We slide down about 22 picks and we give up a sixth round pick to get a starting caliber right tackle. And this guy is a stud. Number eight overall blocking grade in the run game. Let's go. Let's bulldoze some people. We've got Sheridan on the line. Sheridan. Oh, I didn't sign you back there. Sheridan, welcome to the cockpit. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Got you loud and clear. How are you feeling about the Morgan Moses trade? Um, I feel good. I do feel good. I'm kind of confused about it, though. I got a question for you. Yeah, shoot. We had Morgan's, uh, Mor Morgan, Mo Morgan Moses before, mm -hmm. and then we traded for a fourth. I'm just kind of confused. Can we had him before. Is he worth mm -hmm. a fourth to you? So we traded down in the fourth and gave up a sixth. So we, we moved down 20 picks in the fourth round and give up a sixth round pick to get him back. The reason we let him go was because he had such a good year. He deserved to be the starting right tackle on our team or a team in general, but the jets felt compelled to give Makai Becton more of a chance to get that starting role. And because Mo Morgan Moses didn't want to compete with another player, he was uh, allowed to walk. Like he, his contract was up. He didn't want to sign with us. So that's why we, we wanted him initially, but we didn't get him because of the Makai Becton, uh, you know, hope that okay, he would be yeah, the, the, the fiasco. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Makai Becton basically I, 
that selection ended up costing us, I believe, George Fant and Morgan Moses. And now, luckily, we got Morgan Moses back as our starting tag. So, okay. Comes okay. Quick question. Quick question. Who do you see as getting at receiver now that it's kind of, you know, time's going by? We're kind of losing a little bit of options and stuff like that. Yeah, I think we're probably keeping an eye on Mike Williams, seeing what that's going to shake out to. I would love Tyler Boyd, but if I had to guess, the Jets aren't going to pay a big money wide receiver. I think they're probably more likely to draft that weapon at 10 or trade down and draft him at that pick. Brian Thomas Jr. out of LSU, six foot four or five fast, dude. That's who I would like. He's a one year wonder right now, but he's he's exciting. He's the profile receiver that would compliment Garrett Wilson. It's what I wanted in Mike Evans. It's what I wanted in T Higgins. You don't have to give up like a pick for Higgins and the contract and all that. I don't think the Jets are in position to do that. So I would think weapon. I think Bowers is also squarely in, in play. So you don't necessarily need a second wide receiver as much as re like what Roger said. I need a second receiver. You know, he didn't say wide receiver. Maybe it's maybe tight end right. is in play for them as well. Right. I could get on board with weapon. Bowers. Yeah, weapon. Right. What do you want? Uh, man. Hey, I'm a big fan. I watch all you guys, man. Uh, I never thought I'd be on the show. I'm I'm, I'm I'm all the way from California, man. I love y'all, bro. I love it, dude. Dude, I appreciate the call, and it really means a lot that you can hang out in the chat and support. It's it's a lot of fun. The community that we've grown online is so much better than my like little slice of <laughs> town that doesn't have like any Jet fans in it. So, right. dude, right. I appreciate the call. But you have been ejected from the cockpit. <laughs> Boys and girls, call the numbers on the screen. You can scan it or you can click the link comment in the live chat and you'll pop on over. You get three minutes on the clock. After three minutes, I eject you. I've got Rob and then Henry on the line. Rob, we're going to go to you first. How you doing, Rob? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. I'm feeling pretty good today now that we've got our starting right tackle figured out. Is that What was your feeling when you saw the news? I'm disappointed because... Aaron Rodgers lets us down every single time. Now you've got him in politics. And what we need to concentrate is football. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, getting the, you know, the offensive line attack. That's what we should be doing. Well, that's what we did um, do. Yeah, but it's just like, are we a team or are we other players? Let's concentrate on the team first. Stop being a me person and be a, a be a we person. You know what I mean? Like mm. you can't you can't chase the presidential presidential thing and still play football. You got to kind of concentrate on one thing. Look how many fans were devastated. You know when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. I was at that game when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. I was literally right behind Aaron Rodgers with three uh, Buffalo Bills fans talking trash the entire time. And I wanted to cry. I was like, oh, my God, when he got hurt. I mean, then I told him, I was like, watch, one interception, two interceptions, three interceptions, you're going to lose this game. And they lost the game, but we also lost two. Our whole season was gone. Oh, dude, you know? so I'm saying, like, went down. But, like, I don't think – And, by the so... way, yeah. oh, okay, no. you first. Well, so I was going to say, look, no, I, I, I think the, the, teams... the presidential candidate stuff, I, I don't know how much of that is, like, formally done. He went on a hike with RFK Jr. not too long ago. So, like, what if they're walking through the woods and they're like, oh, hey, would you be my VP if I did? He's like, yeah, sure, I'd be your VP. Why not? Let's have some more ayahuasca. Let's, like, hang out and smoke a blunt, whatever it is. Like, they're chilling. So maybe it was just <laughs> one of those things that came out. And it's like, like, Rogers would just say, like, look, I'm playing football. I'm not going to be VP. And an independent candidate's not going to be a, you know, presidential, you know, person anyway. So it's not even like Rogers is going right. to be campaigning. But, like... I just, uh, with Rodgers going down, how many times has he failed us? He failed us through four snaps. And, like, that's really what it is. And he got hurt. Like, I can't fault him for the Achilles. He's been healthy, like, his entire career. And, it, you know, it sucks Lazard didn't pan out. It sucks Cook didn't pan out. He also took so much less money than he needed to. So, like, to some degree, as much as it sucks that it happened, I'm giving him that financial flexibility to, like, get players in that he wants because he gave back that money. And we were willing to have well, him on that money. I would say... First off, I'm a big fan of your show, number one. I Mike watch Williams all the released, by the way. I see the chat going crazy. Yeah. Let's go. I, 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 I watch your show all the time, and um, I, I admire that you step up to the plate, and you're a big Jets fan like I am. Hopefully, we're going to have a great season. But uh, to all the Jets fans, let's go. And, um, you know, hopefully you'll see some of you guys at the game. And let's kick some rear end. And let's go Jets, baby. 
Let's go, Rob. Thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected right. from the cockpit. Oh, that was fun. He's got some energy. I don't agree with this take. He threw like a wet towel on me. Threw a wet towel. I was all sorts of jazzed up. And then he's like, guys, it's all about me, Rob. Oh, why is my phone yelling at me right now? My phone like voice yelled at me. Rob, thank you for the call. <laughs> I was hoping for more excitement. <laughs> That's okay. He's jazzed up. The end of that call was epic. He's juiced. I was at the game too. Dude, I know exactly what the feeling was. All of us do. Having friggin' uh, Rodgers go down like that. All right, let's go over to Henry. Then we got Alex. Henry's on the line. Henry, how you doing, brother? What's happening? Uh, yeah, Morgan Moses. Let's do this. Uh, right side solidified. Uh, Michael Nania made a point. He was like, with signing him and then Simpson, maybe we're going to shift more to power running. And I've been screaming mm. for a while that I think that this team is more suitable for a power run like Brees, just put them on stretches toss plays and just go and just move forward all the moving around first of all abt mm -hmm. is going to get hurt if he keeps uh mm -hmm. being shifty just be just be strong that mean nasty mm -hmm. street that we've been wanting up front so mm -hmm. i think that that that's uh a good thing but with that said there's a hypothetical what okay. if uh, the market for becton is uh not that big and we bring him back for super, super cheap because you know how the team is. They're loyal sure. and all that stuff. And obviously with the injury history, I don't know if anyone's really screaming for, you know, signing Becton. If we shift over to a power style, mm -hmm. how would you feel about Becton at left tackle? Knowing that, you know, we're not as worried about him being so agile and mobile. If he's coming back on a cheap deal, I don't love the penalties, but it would be a situation where it's like, hey, we're bringing in Becton. We're bringing in like a Bakhtiari as well. And something along those lines. Becton could play right tackle if something happened to Moses in a pinch. I I don't hate it. It depends what the contract would be. If he's getting somewhere around like five Whatever million dollars or so, rough, rough, roughly the same. Yeah, six. six yeah, like five, it, six it, Morgan Moses is five and a half million base salary this year. If he's going to take something around there, I would bring back Becton. I think there's enough upside, and you hope that the injury is what hampered him towards the end of the year, and that there's there's more there. Like obviously, I didn't want him for like fourteen, fifteen, whatever million dollars. Yeah. And we and we know Becton's big on social media. He hasn't posted anything like stupid or ugly or no. anything. So I feel like they they ended they they mutually you know are on a, on a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. My my I want to I want to mention uh, I'm so sad that Deontay to the Panthers. I was uh, screaming for Ugh. that one. That was yep. my that was my big one. Uh, so I well, love so what your, kills uh, me Brian with that Thomas. too is I think I think Boyd oh, goes to Pittsburgh now. Because that opening is there, and he's from That's Pittsburgh, fair. and he wants to play. And everyone is signing with rivals, apparently. So that makes so much sense. That <laughs> dude, I love the season it, of rivals. It, I love when t when players go from one team to a rival. There's that extra juice two times a year. Like I love a little bit of hate in the NFL, a little bit of drama. I like it. All right. So before we end, since I'm I'm going on, I want to talk about Brian Thomas. I I genuinely think Brian Thomas is gonna not not saying equivalency in terms of like. Hall of Fame after two seasons, mm -hmm. but I think uh, Brian Thomas is going to be this year's Justin Jefferson. Uh, he's he's going to be the fourth uh, receiver taken. He mm -hmm. ran a lot faster than everyone expected. He was already a dog. Obviously the LSU connection, but I'm you know I'm not saying that that's just coincidence. But I really think that he's going to, like mm -hmm. Marv, like we said about Marvin Harrison. I don't think he's going to be like the goat. You know mm -hmm. he's going to be great and high seal or high floor. But I genuinely think Brian Thomas has a chance to be like the guy. So if we trade with like the Broncos since uh, the Falcons got McCarthy trade with the Broncos, mm -hmm. get Thomas at 13, Beckton and that at, at left tackle. I don't know. I don't know. I like it. I'm a fan. I would do that. I would 100%. I like Brian Thomas Jr. a lot. He's got the size profile I want, too. He's like that that bigger body dude. The speed is rare. I would, honestly, if the Jets wanted to take him at 10, I would sign off on it. I really would. That also opens the door for Garrett doing a lot of underneath stuff, mm -hmm. you know, really doing some slot stuff, um, play, you know, last slants, you know, everything in the middle. Cause we know what Rogers is going to, you know, leave him high and dry throwing across the field. And then last thing, hopefully like Cam Curl, we can get him for cheap, you know, safety because mm -hmm. Whitehead just uh, resigned with the Bucks. So Cam Curl would be a lot of fun. If we got him. Interesting. Interesting. I do want to add some extra depth. I'm hoping Davis comes back. That's my, my fingers crossed. Brother, you've been ejected You're from the cockpit. Here. Thank you so much, Henry, for the call. We've got Alex on the line. Boys and girls, if you want to hang up, not hang up, hang out, hop on the stream, call into the show, the pinned comment in the live chat. Where is it? I don't know where it is on the screen. Uh, or you can scan the QR code right here, and it'll take you to the call in line as well. I get three minutes on the clock, and after three minutes, I eject you. We're going to go over to Alex. Alex, how you doing, brother? <laughs> hey, what's up? Let's go Jets, baby. Yeah. <laughs> how you feel Jets, about the Morgan Moses trade? trade. Listen, I'm at work right now. I'm calling in from Spain, representing New York to the fullest. 
Let's go. Long time listener, first time caller. Big trades in the. I'm sorry, I'm so I'm speaking so fast. I no, it's okay. Guys. I listen to you every single day. I got to get back to work and I got to take care of my kids. Draft, left tackle, left tackle, left tackle, receiver. Mm -hmm. Stop the bullshit. Get Aaron Rodgers some protection. Let's go. Let's go, baby. J E T N. Jets, 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 Jets. Jets no, Love you, baby. brother. Alex, thank you so much for the call. Love You've you. been injected from the cockpit. Get back to work. Get back to work. Oh, that's cool. That's fun. Calling in from Spain, all over the world. Where are you calling from? It's an internet-based call, so it's not even like a phone call. So you're not going to have to call, like, international. I love it. Very cool. Very cool. We got a bunch of first-time callers today. It makes me smile. <laughs> it makes me smile when that, that happens. Uh, all right. Boys and girls, if you're just tuning in, the New York Jets traded for Morgan Moses, a fourth-round pick, gets kicked back to the Jets. So the Jets slide back. 20 picks in the fourth round. The Jets give up their fourth round pick, pick number 112, and they give up a sixth round pick. So for a 20 pick drop and a sixth round pick, you're getting a starting caliber right tackle that was on the team before that has like elite run blocking skills to go next to AVT at right guard. Oh, sign me up. Sign me up, boys and girls. I like it. Let's go over to the chat. Kenny. Whoop, hold on, let me... Get this sorted out. Got to get the comment on top. Boom. Kenny comes in. He says, if we don't grab one of these wide receivers, I'll be hella upset. Renfro or Williams would be nice. I like Mike Williams, especially if you can get him on an incentive laden deal. If he's saying like, okay, look, I'm willing to do uh, a little uh, prove it deal to prove I can stay healthy. Or do you have to sign up to big money? Like, how much money do you want to devote to wide receiver? That's where I kind of run into, like, the conundrum. Because the draft route is super sexy. You'd have all that ability to, to have expensive weapons, like Brees Hall, like Garrett Wilson, like maybe a Brian Thomas Jr., and they're all under contract for, like, dirt cheap the next few years. So, like, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm on this weird fence right now. I would trade down and maybe go weapon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I would say Renfro. If you can get Renfro on the cheap, I like him as a wide receiver three over getting like a uh, um, Odell or something like that. Taylor comes in. Taylor says, plus he spent two years out of the game last year was just feeling himself out again. Are you talking about Bakhtiari, I think? I think that's, or maybe you're talking about Becton? We were talking about Becton before. Oh, that's what you're saying. Taylor, uh, Becton is the same age as Warren, still developing, bring him back. If you can get Becton back on a cheap contract, I'm interested. Interested. For sure. <laughs> Sorry. I'm trying to fix this. I'm seeing the fan in my shot and it's throwing me off. Um, uh, again, Taylor, absolutely better than Schweitzer, Warren, and Mitchell. Man, I am not sure what you guys are talking about in there. <laughs> uh, Fungus Among Us says draft a wide receiver. I would like to go with the expensive wide receiver position for cheap in the draft. Dude, fresh out of college. I like it. Uh, A Stew. 115. Becton played with a boot on his right ankle the last seven games. Have you ever played a sport with a bad ankle? Ever played offensive line with a bad knee? Or ankle. It's very difficult. Well, I think the, the fear for me was the, the contract and the penalties. He just had a lot of them. Now, some of those are pre-snap. Maybe he's concerned about the injury and the brace and he needs to get a little bit earlier of a jump so he's a little bit more fidgety. I, I don't know. Mekhi Becton on a cheaper deal is far more appealing to me. If he says, hey, I'll come back on a one-year, $5 million prove-it deal to, you know, I want to be depth, I want to compete, I want to do this. Or maybe it's a, an unguaranteed deal. But like, hey, you want to be here? Like, win a spot. Like, let's do it. Uh, I would bring him back on a cheap deal. Uh, Astu says, would you trade this year's fifth and sixth? Would you trade this year's fifth and a sixth next year? Oh, for Justin Fields. Um, I mean, that would be cool as hell, but it's kind of the same situation we're in with Zach, and I don't see Douglas doing that. He already passed on him once. I, it would be surprising to see him do that. Uh, Chris says, if the Jets were able 
to get a second rounder via trade, would you be open to them grabbing a developmental quarterback if one of them is available like a Bo Nix? I would consider that. Although, I would almost want it to be a first round pick. Like, I would almost rather wait till next year and give up additional picks to go get our quarterback at the tail end of the first round or even just use the tail end of the first round pick on a quarterback next year. Although I think next year's quarterback class isn't supposed to be as strong. I don't know. I want the fifth year option with Rodgers here. Hmm. I don't know. Second round, I would consider it. If you plug all the other holes, I kind of want to go all in now. And it feels like you're half in, half out, especially for a like a, a player that could be like an impact player in the second round. We've got Aaron coming in the super chat. He says, Romo Dunze is calling. Dude, if Odunze is there, Garrett Wilson already commented on one of Odunze's uh, Instagram posts. So that I could 100%, 100% see like some type of love or chemistry going on between those receivers. Let's do it. DKI, thank you so much for the super chat, brother. He says, Mike Williams is being released. Mike Williams being released. I like it. I'm excited to see... <clears throat> sorry about that i'm excited to see how much he's worth what does he get on the open market he hasn't been healthy the last few seasons he's a great contested catch wide receiver if you can get him that's the size profile i want i've been talking about that dj shark t higgins mike evans those are the size profiles i want i want someone that compliments garrett wilson ridley never complimented garrett wilson ridley was a great piece that we wanted prior to getting garrett wilson Give me the big body wide receiver that Lazard was supposed to be. Or convince me on, on a slot like a Renfro, some player like that. Maybe an Odell on a cheap contract, maybe, if he wants to come back here. But given what Darnell Mooney just got at $13 million, I'm definitely thinking weapon early in this draft. I don't want to pay $13 million for a Darnell Mooney. It's crazy town. Mike Williams, what's he going to get? Is it around 10? I don't even know if I want to do it around 10. No, I probably would do it around 10. That's a lie. But I would hope we go a different direction. I, I would like a young weapon. I like drafting a weapon, especially with this Moses signing. Give me a trade down, draft a weapon in the first, someone that's more of a developmental tackle in the second. Maybe it's a Patrick Paul, a Jordan Morgan, a Sua Matea, or whatever his name is, the, the BYU tackle. That would be cool. Lewis says, I have a feeling we'll get both Becton and Bakhtiari for cheap contracts. That's that's probably the move. That's probably the move. Get Becton, who can play left and right tackle. He's your ultimate backup tackle for those guys. And then Bakhtiari comes in late. Like, I'm talking training camp late. And he's there. He's like, all right, I'm ready to go. And then Bakhtiari, Becton... They have a competition. Or Becton just says, okay, I want to be here. And he's like, I'm, you know, I'm a team player. I want to be a part of this. I want to be the swing tackle. That would be cool. Bakhtiari and Becton back for like incentive laden deals based on starts. I'm down with that. I'm down with that. You got me. Victor says Becton played well to start the year. He dominated the Eagles game. He got a high ankle sprain and only sat out one game. That's when the game, uh, when his game fell off. He was playing hurt. So that's the hope, right? Like he, he did have a lot of penalties early on. Like penalties have been a problem for Becton. I didn't love his play early. I thought he was fine. He was fine. And then once the injury happened, then it really went off the rails. Becton on a cheap contract, I'm more, more open to. Uh, Hawks says Mike Williams projected to be in that 10 to $13 million a year range. I think eight mil is my personal max on Williams, two years, 16 million. If you get him two years, 16 million, Hawk, I would do that. I think that's a good move. Um, if you want to do incentives up to 10, 13, I'm fine with that too. Yoshi giving us a little more insight, saying the Chargers are releasing Mike Evans, making him a free agent. Williams on the books for $32 million cap hit becomes the top free agent wide receiver available. I'm curious to see what he gets. As a top receiver, did uh, did Ridley officially sign back in Jacksonville? I know I saw him wanting to go back. Mike says, Ryan, do you think Douglas 
would consider trading down from 10 for a second round pick. Draft Brian Thomas in the first and Tyler Guyton in the second. Yes, 100%. I would do that. I would do that. I don't think Guyton gets out of the first round, though. I think teams are going to like Guyton's size. If he's there in the second round, if you could say Brian Thomas Jr. in the first and developmental tackle in the second, yes. Yes, 100% yes. I'm on board. Hawks says Bakhtiari incoming pending a physical. I think that's definitely the case. I, I'm hoping it's just later on so we can kind of uh, solve the offensive line without him <laughs> and have him come in late. Uh, let's see. With the Chargers releasing Williams, that means they're definitely taking a receiver at number five. They also took Quentin Johnston last year who was definitely going to be the replacement for Mike Williams. I think they tried to do that a year in advance. I don't like Quentin Johnston. I'll be honest. Um, could they go wide receiver at that pick? Sure. Cause they got Keenan Allen still up there in age. So I could see neighbors. I could see Odunze. I could see Bowers. And then you can argue maybe a tackle. They already have a left tackle. Could they go with the right tackle like a JC Latham or could they go with a, uh, a Fuaga somewhere on at those picks? Uh, at those positions that would help us not taking left tackle don't take left tackle don't take receiver and i'm gonna feel pretty good <laughs> that would be my my uh my hope darian where to go boom darian i would like the organization to keep calm and keep building through the draft not excited about signing guys near the end of their career 32 is not too old or 33 i guess is how old uh morgan moses is that's not that's not crazy old for a tackle Guys play a long, long time. I do like building through the draft, but you're in a win now window too. So it's okay to have guys on a one or two year contract if they're a higher upside uh, or maybe higher floor type player. Like I feel like with Moses, we have a very, very high floor and he's a good tackle. Like number eighth in run blocking type tackle. Like very, very good. Alex says, get me Big Mike or Boyd and we're cooking. Yeah, if you can get a Boyd, I would Tyler Boyd would be my pick. If you can get one of the two, Boyd would be my my preferred route. Um interested to see what happens. Taylor says, early was his first ball in two years. There are going to be mental mistakes. Put him up, growing pains. Talking about Becton and growing pains. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Uh Flex says, I'm on the train <laughs> with no service, but I'd call in. But if the Jets don't figure out a way to get Mike Williams, I don't know what's going on. Get him. Make the draft easier. What's he going to cost? Someone said two years, $16 million. If you can get that, I'm on board. I would get Mike Williams. Uh, Jack Kim says Ashton Davis probably released. Ashton Davis is on a, is a free agent, so he, he's not, a, uh, he's not on, under contract right now. A.D. Mitchell. That would be cool. He's blazing fast. I, I feel more confident going tackle early, <laughs> earlier than later uh, when it comes to the draft. But you could convince me with a solid offensive line and we're, we're saying we're going to not need the offensive lineman to start, but we need a weapon to start. Oh, give me Brian Thomas Jr. at top of this draft. <laughs> trade down, get a second. If you can get a second in a trade down, now we're cooking. Uh, Dustin says, Ryan, I see another defensive end coming at 10. Just kidding. Just kidding. I really think trade down is the way to go. I trade down is hundred percent the way to go for me. If we saw a defensive tackle or a defensive end, I'd lose my damn mind before. Like when we were watching the draft last year, me, Greenbean and, and Matt, we're like, okay, the one position you cannot draft, <laughs> the one position you cannot draft is edge rusher. Fucking edge rusher. <laughs> damn it. Why did we do that? And that's not even a knock on Mike on, uh, on Will McDonald. I'm excited for Will McDonald. I just, I wanted to keep up. Uh, J-Max says, trade for Quentin Johnson, big young wide receiver. They just took him in the first round last year. Why would they do that? They're not going to do that. It would be a big dead cap hit. Uh, Hawk says, Stuya Harbaugh used a lot of tight end with J.J. McCarthy and ran a pro-style offense in college. He knows the importance of that position for Herbert, I'm sure. So I could definitely see Bowers at five. That's where I'm hoping Bowers goes because Bowers is one of those players that is very, very intriguing and it would be fun to have on our team, but I'd rather let someone else take him in front of us. 
<laughs> that would that's that's sort of my hope. So if you have if you're saying three quarterbacks are gonna are definitely gonna go. I think you know what I, I think we could say four. I think four quarterbacks are going to go in the top ten before us. I would love to see Bowers. You gotta think Marvin Harrison Jr., neighbors, at least two, probably three wide receivers are going. Then you just need one other person that's not named Joe Walt to go. And then you're feeling good. So tight end to the Chargers. That's what I'm hoping for. That's how Alt falls. Justin Thomas said, Whitehead's deal gives us a sixth round comp as of right now. Ooh. And signing uh, trading for Morgan Moses doesn't hurt us in the comp formula either because it's a trade. And if you sign a Bakhtiari, he was released. And if you sign a Mike Williams, he's a release. So that helps you from a comp pick formula. So then you'd have a fourth from Huff and a sixth from Whitehead. Wow. That's interesting. I really wish we got a third for Huff, though. I like that. I like playing around with this. That's how you that's how you save the comp picks. Mike Williams and Bakhtiari. And then you bring back a Becton. As long as you're not shopping in the free agent market, your comp picks are safe. Thanks for the cheese. Says, who would you like to sign as a running back number two? As a running back number two, I I would rather go the draft route. I'd rather use a pick, although we don't have a sixth anymore. I was going to say Frank Gore Jr. Um, if he makes it to the seventh, we don't have a fifth round pick, so you're kind of in a in a weird spot. So maybe you do sign a running back. I would want more of a power back. Do you go with like uh, you know Dylan with the relationship to Green Bay uh, to to Rogers? J.K. Dobbins was in rehab with Rogers. You could see a connection there if they wanted to play together on like a really cheap deal. Running back such a young man's game. I don't want to invest a whole lot into running back too. Carson Steele is Green Bean's guy. That would be cool. He's probably going to be there in the seventh round. Uh, Dustin says, Ryan, I'm a newer Jets fan because of my wife. I'm also a Niners fan. And I'll say it right now. Get Ayuk. He's a stud. If we can trade for Ayuk, that would be nuts. But that's also like a big contract. But that's a win now move. That's a power move. If you can get Ayuk with like a trade down to 31, that would be interesting. Now you have two elite weapons, but you still don't have like the big body guy. And I guess you just assume Lazard could be that with Rodgers with timing and, and shit. Um, I'd be down. I'd be down. I'd be so down. Uh, Mike D's nuts. Huge trade for us, Ryan. Go get a veteran left tackle and go best player available in the draft. Love the show, Ryan. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Mike, 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 Mike. Veteran left tackle. I think we have to assume it's going to be Bakhtiari. Until he signs elsewhere, I'm assuming Bakhtiari is going to be a Jet at some point. I'm down with Tyron Smith. Is Charles Leno still out there? Did he sign anywhere? I haven't seen any news on him pop across my screen. AJ Spaz says, Audric Estime or Will Shipley, both absolute monsters that can get in the later rounds. So now that we've made this trade, I'd have to look at our fourth round picks. What are our fourth round picks right now? Because if this is... Either way, you have your third round, you have your first round pick, your third round pick, and then you have two fourths still but you slid back from 112 to what was it 125 or 132 i don't remember what the pick was um 134 you don't have a fifth you don't have a sixth now because it went in this trade so then you got your two sevenths oh no you do have a sixth i think you still have a sixth. don't we have a comp pick sixth i think we got a comp pick sixth. now i gotta look it up give me a second give me a second tankathon um, the Jets sixth round went to Baltimore. So the Jets do not. Oh no, we do. We have a we have pick one eighty five in the sixth round still. So you have you don't have a fifth. You have a sixth, and you should still have two sevenths, right? Like the last two picks in the draft. Cool. So we're rocking. We're cooking right now. I'm a fan of this. Late round picks. 
Red John says, what about Zeke as a backup? Great pass protector. Zeke as a free agent, I'm down for. I would have signed him last year. I would have been pumped on him. I've got Tigo joining the show. What's up, Tigo? How you doing? Baby daycare day. What's up? What's up, little man? Baby daycare for Mogan Moses. Very excited. Say hi, baby. Say hi, baby. Very excited in his green PJs. No, oh, he's having a great day. Yeah. <laughs> how crazy is it? And then I got to go because he's not very happy. But how That's crazy right. is it that like, like yesterday, like, and, and I get it. I get the whole, oh, not being happy, blah, 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 whatever it is. But like, I just think it's crazy how you go one day, everyone's anti, like, oh, Douglas is, Doug, Douglas is sleeping. All these players are going like, did anybody have Morgan Moses on their bingo card of players that were going to leave? Nope. Like, I did not. I mine? definitely did not. I thought, why would you, why would you trade him? <laughs> it doesn't exactly. make any sense to me. That's the point. So I just, I'm not going to sit here and defend Joe Douglas because like, obviously there are other things that we need to do and he does have a tendency to act slow, but man, can he make a trade? Right. So what's the move at 10 now? A weapon. I hope so. I've always been, no, 10 should be for sale. We shouldn't yes. pick a 10. I don't want to yeah. pick a 10. I've been on this train for a long time. A second round pick in this year's draft is more important to me than whatever player you can get at him. You know, there's unless a lot of good players player too. Is, I like yeah, all the tackles. Unless that player is named Joe Alt or Marvin Harrison Jr., don't pick at ten. I, if we have the option to slide down, like if we have the option to let, uh, you know, the Broncos hop in front of Minnesota or the the Raiders to hop in front of the Broncos or something along those lines, it would be great. Slide back. You mentioned in the in the chat. The uh, the Bengals trade back. That would be huge. If they want to come uh. up. <laughs> you can't that eat it, dude. Adorable. You can't eat it. <laughs> that, um, the ah sound was just amazing. Oh, yeah. dude. It's, no, dude, I, I, I think the Bengals, the Bengals seem to be the type of team that would come up for a guy like Brock Bowers, you yeah. know, just because for nothing more right than just. I feel like either yeah, one. Yeah, that too. Like, that's a team that you could see coming up, but, like, there's a ton of teams that, like, I could theoretically see coming up. I just think having another third-round pick, having another second-round, or having a second-round pick, period, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is way more worth whatever player you're going to get at 10. Mm -hmm. I love Malik Neighbors. I love Romo Dunze, and having those guys on this team would be insane. I'm a big fan of Brock Bowers, and having him on the team would be insane. I love Talise Fuaga, but like if you're telling me that we can trade out of 10 and get Amarius Mims in the first round, if you're still tackling the first round, or like Jackson Powers Johnson in the first round, and then you can get a guy like, we were talking about him in the group chat, Lad McConkey in the Dude, second. Crushing like, it. Absolutely annihilating it. Or or if you want to do it in reverse and you say, okay, you know what? We're going to get Brian Thomas Jr., who's my number one target in the first round now. Maybe not at 10. I would take him at 10. Yeah, right? I'm with you. But that that would be a little bit of a reach in my eyes. Yeah. But like, I would love If you love can go down to 18 and take Brian Thomas Jr. and pick up a second round pick and get... Where do you think Guyton goes? Does Guyton fall to the second the round? First. Okay, that's no, where, I, going that's where people keep asking me like second round. I was like, I don't think he's going that that low. Yeah, no, I I have. I feel like you're probably gonna be in like the class. James, like the you're gonna be in like the Jordan Morgan, Sua Matea kind of range. I feel like in the second round, if you're going with attack, I don't know about Jordan Morgan. His arms, his arm length scares me. Well, I'm just saying he might be there in the, arms. I'm saying he he. I think um, he's gonna be there for the second round pick if you were to trade down. Oh yeah, there's a ton of this. This tackle class is really really deep. And like again, we're not done right mm. my new my new meme offensive line uh combo is go and signing uh kevin zeitler just so that we can have the new york ravens offensive line because literally we would have stolen their right tackle their right guard uh and their left guard and just plopped them on the team that would mean so elijah vera tucker is at left tackle which i still don't think is fully off of the board but that's just that's my new hilarious for the lulz I think AVT is the break glass in case of emergency tackle. 
I think they're going to keep him yeah. at guard and they're going to bring in Bakhtiari. Do you, th- people have been talking about Beckton on a cheap deal. You think that happens? Nah, there's a 14 bidding deal from, is it four teams, three teams? Like he's going to start somewhere. I know people don't, don't want to believe that or whatever, but like, He's gonna get a he's gonna get a starting job somewhere. Someone's gonna look at it and be like, "Oh, we're gonna bank on the injuries and blah blah blah." I don't think he comes. I don't think he's coming back, dude. That would be. I think we so if Bakhtiari's left tackle penciled in, I think they hope Warren develops. I feel like Moses yeah. is like they hope Mitchell develops or whatever. Like it almost is like encouraging your younger guys and kind of adding depth with more reassuring yeah. players. And if you bring in a Bakhtiari, that does the same thing with AVT being the like, hey, worst case scenario, we hate to move you, but we're going to move you, <laughs> you know, if we have to. Yeah. I think, I'll let you go. I think that this staff is way more high on Carter Warren than the fan mm-hmm. bases. I'll say I that. like Carter Warren. I had a too. thumbnail made Carter for Warren. like the, the difference maker for 2024 or whatever. Like at the end of the season, I was like, man, should I do this? I was like, I don't know if anyone's even going to click on this. But like I like Carter Warren a lot. I think it's he could yeah. be such a wild card if he hits. He's our right tackle of the future. He takes Mo- he's he takes Morgan Moses's job. Probably. Not this year. Morgan Moses plays all of this year, and then yeah. next year your starting right tackle is Carter Warren. I I believe that. I would love that local kid too, Patterson. I think. Yep. Jersey, love it. Here you go. Right, kick me out. See you guys. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You're out of here. <laughs> Tigo calling in. If you guys haven't checked out the Armchair GM with Tigo and Greenbean, it is wild. <laughs> it is absolutely wild. They go uh, at each other. Our group chat has been like outrageous. And they go live tonight at 8 o'clock. So they're going to be able to talk about it. I can't wait. Uh, I've got Mike, then I've got Devin. But I want to go over to Adam's Super Chat. Adam, thank you so much for the Super Chat. Says, do you uh, do you sign Williams now that he's released? I like him a lot more than I liked him as a trade, for sure. Uh, I would definitely trade, or trade, I would sign Mike Williams. It depends what the contract is. And I still want to, like, consider, strongly consider wide receiver in the first round. Strongly consider it. Uh, but I like, I like Williams. All right, let's go over to Mike. What's up, Mike? How you doing? I couldn't be happier right now. That was like, I was actually talking to my friends, and I'm like, remember when when, when Joe Douglas signed Morgan Moses and it was such a great find like three years ago? I'm like, he needs to find a, tr- a player like that. I never thought he would actually trade back for Morgan Moses. Like, what a, what a, what a shocking move for me. Like, I, not in a million years did I see that one coming. Dude, I jumped then, out of my seat. And I com- completely agree with you on the whole, like, it encourages the young players. It means that Max Mitchell and now Carter Warren have a chance to actually grow and not be forced into terrible situations with t- uh, rotating offensive line getting screwed over. You can kind of actually sit and learn from very good actual veterans. Mm-hmm. Bringing back Tiari, I'm a little bit happier with that now that we have Morgan Moses. I'm not just like, okay, back is our only guy and we're screwed when he gets injured in preseason halfway through, yeah. you know, because that's what's going to happen. But um, – if we can get Beckton cheap, bring him back. If we can't, I'm 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 cool with it now because we have much more security. But um, the one thing I want to say is I think this opens the door now even more for a trade down at ten, 100%. say like fourteenth with the Vikings. Uh, I think they had the fourteenth pick, if I'm not mistaken. Like that would make sense for the Vikings. There's a quarterback they like, and for Vikings us, are at eleven. We can then- so we're we're at ten. It goes uh, Jets, Vikings, Broncos, Raiders, Saints, Colts. I think. Okay, I think. I think it was the Raiders I was thinking of. I know they got Raiders Gardner can Minshew, hop in front I, of Dallas or uh, hop in front of Denver. In front of the Vikings as well, who are probably looking to rebuild as well. Take a quarterback, and then at 14, we could. I think Brock Bowers might be there. And if you trade down and he's mm-hmm. there, then you it's even better value. Or you can even go tackle and get another developmental, t- like not developmental, but like you can yeah. almost take Mims there, who has a ton of potential. Just in, yep. you know, just you're worried about those type of concerns with him and you can actually sit him a little bit more Then you're not forced to, to throw him to the wolves and you can actually mm-hmm. develop players there. So I think that a trade down makes a lot of sense there, but I do mm-hmm. like the fact that now on paper, we're not strongholded into being like it's tackle and that's it at 10. I, I absolutely love that. It's, it gives us so much more options and the trade down now becomes more viable. 
So, I mean, great move. Shocking. I, I'm, I'm shocked by it because I didn't think he was going to pull this one off. I thought it was going to be kind of a quiet off season. We end up with like Bakhtiari and a couple other pieces that no one was really that happy with. Dude, this but, this changes changes the outlook of our off season entirely. I feel like I, I loved it. I, it. Like I jumped out of my seat. I literally had the same conversation with my <laughs> my friend yesterday. I was mm-hmm. like, man, if we could just have a signing like a Morgan Moses. I mean, like I understand that happened in July or whatever, but like it was such a solid, sound signing. And like good play. Fucking He's just a twenty four hours later. Right <laughs> Yeah, you know, literally. I'm like, God damn. I was like, I, and the value was fine. I'm, I'm fine with the, what we gave up, and I'm fine with what we got back because it's like a yep. fourth. It's a fourth round swap, and who cares about a six? Yep, hundred percent. I'm so, on board. Now, I would. Um, I like the trade down. I like going weapon in the first round. If you can give me a trade down and get a Brian Thomas Jr. or a, uh, if Bowers falls to there, I'm fine with that. And then if you could, do you think you pick up a second in that move? How does that like? Uh, yeah. What does that? Do you think you so, can get a second round pick from that? Yeah, if if you can if you know that the that say the Raiders are jumping everyone else to get a quarterback, you gotta be like, hey, you either you want it or you don't. If you want it, you gotta give us your second. If you don't want to trade down with us, we're not gonna take that value. Like, you have to force it. it. You have to kind of like, you have the you have the ability now to be like, hey, there's three teams above you in the same position. You either do it or you don't. If you don't want it, we'll give it someone else. And you kind of force them to upcharge, kind of like what the Bears did with Carolina. They got a ransom. It wouldn't be. the ransom but you can still get that that second round pick and you can still get that from someone and then once you do that you can like offensive lineman in the second round or another weapon Mm -hmm. or you go bowers and a wide receiver like there's other options you can do here i mean i just really like bowers now but uh, i can i can move on from him real quick if we take a different player like but we just need more weapons because at this point knowing the jets and how cursed we are garrett wilson's due for an injury and i hate saying that but that's like how mike no 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 Get that bad juju the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, no, not happening. <laughs> Talk about that. <sighs> Lose my damn mind. All right. We're going over to Noah. Noah, how you doing? Yo, bro? what's going on, Ryan? I appreciate you uh, letting me in, man. Yeah, of course, dude. What's your, th- how are your feelings on the Morgan Moses trade? Bro, I love it. I feel like today the sun is shining a little bit on one just drive. I feel like it's been a long time and a lot of, uh, not poor moves, but, you know, rough days over here. Mm-hmm. But um, it's sure. finally looking up. And I think that the trade gives us a lot more uh, a lot more options, a lot more wiggle room here, like, heading into the draft. And I think, I don't know, man, like, my heart's beating in a really good way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fluttering. It's like a, my first crush. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I, I love it. It's a, it's a home run move. It gives you so much flexibility, so much flexibility at that number 10 overall pick. You can actually go out and get Rodgers a weapon that Green Bay never did in his entire time there. I guarantee that was one of the, like, the selling points. And this, uh, I love it. I didn't have Morgan Moses on my bingo card. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know he was coming. Neither did I, but, but it's uh, really exciting. But I don't, I mean, I don't know how many more moves they're going to make in this free agency process, but seeing Mike Williams getting cut, I mean, I saw a little Twitter clip of him, like, making some 50-50, 50-50 catches in it. Uh-huh. It makes sense to couple him with uh, with uh, Wilson, and obviously he'll probably give you something that you wish that you got out of Lazard. I, don't, I think that wouldn't be a terrible play if the dollar's right. Yep. No, I 100% agree. I love the contested catch type player. I wanted that profile. I've been saying that. Mike Evans, T. Higgins, you know, Mike Williams, uh, DJ Shark, like anyone. Give me someone with a big jump catch radius contested catch monster mike williams is that it's just like how much are you going to give up for him uh like on a contract like is it a two-year 16 million dollar type deal or is he trying to get something close to like darnell mooney where it's like 13 million dollars a year and then i'm like a little i don't know <laughs> i start panicking but I, I want the receiver and i think it opens the door at 10 so like what what would your move be at 10 like what do you want uh i still would like to try to get a tackle i mean Moses is a little bit older, and you still have a, a slot to fill. Like, Bakhtiari's in the air. Like, we don't know what his status is. But, I mean, if a guy like Romo Dunze is on the board at 10, I personally really like that. But you propose the whole, like, trade down idea and get a Brian Thomas, and that's that would be huge to me too. So, um, Bowers, you know, also super, like, super high ceiling guy. So, like, it's just – I don't think you can go wrong if you go – a star weapon or if you go an offensive lineman like i wouldn't be upset as long as we don't get like a d tackle or some like random shit mm. i would be more than happy if we get an edge rusher at 10 i'm gonna lose my cool like dallas yeah, turner so, son of a bitch 
<laughs> can't yeah. happen. No, it's got to be a weapon. I feel like it's, I mean, weapon or I understand offensive lineman. Like if all is there, make all the pick. If you love another, like let's say there's two tackles they really like, one of them's there, fine. The trade down idea, if you can get a second round pick, I think I like enough players at pick 13 or 14 or somewhere around there that I would prefer the second round pick and whatever that player is at 14. I think that's my gut. Noah, thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Noah, thank you so much for joining the show. All right. I feel like I've been going for a while. I'm I'm getting exhausted. We're at the two hour mark. All right. Let's uh let's cut this a little short. I'm getting kind of hungry. I'll hop on live again if something else happens. And uh, we will see. Hopefully the Jets do something. Are we going to sign a Mike Williams? Are we going to do something crazy? Are we going to get uh, a trade for like an Ayuk? Something we're not saying. No one saw Morgan Moses, but it opens up the door. It opens up the door for the number 10 pick to be used on whatever the hell we want. Whatever the hell we want. All right. Let's wrap this up. Morgan Moses. St- Dudley McStud. Ryan never let that <laughs> cursed caller call, call back. Uh, why is my phone making noises? All right. Let's recap this. Morgan Moses traded from the Ravens to the New York Jets. Fourth round pick swap. Jets come back 22 picks. They give up a sixth round pick. They get Morgan Moses. I love this move. Opens up the 10th pick for a weapon or a trade down. The trade down scenario is extremely attractive to me right now. If you can get someone to give up a second round pick and you could slide down and you're still within the top 15 picks or so, if you can do that, there's enough good players there. Assuming alt is off the board at 10. I might have to make like a flow chart. I need a flow chart of like what I would like to see happen because that would be intriguing. If you can slide back, give me a Brian Thomas Jr., a six foot four speed demon freak of a receiver and get me a second round pick, get me either a developmental tackle. Man, what do you do with the second round? You probably still go O-line. Or if you take a Jackson Powers Johnson in a trade down, and then there's a, there's a bunch of good receivers in this draft. You take one of them. I love it. All right, but well, that's going to be it, it for me. I'm going to go downstairs. I'm going to take a break. I'm exhausted. I need a drink. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Don't forget Armchair GM. With Tigo and Green Bean tonight, 8 o'clock over on the Talking Jets channel. If you guys want to talk some more Talking Jets news on Morgan Moses, uh, this is Jets Talk signing off. J E T.